The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 Today is National Pizza Party Day. It's every third Friday in May, but I don't have to tell you that. Pizza party. Pizza party. Pizza delivery for robbery, homicide. I thought it could be a fun family activity if we had a make-your-own pizza night. Well, we could order Domino's. No, come on, this'll be fun. You can put anything you want on your pizza. Yeah, I'm putting a Domino's pizza on my pizza. Last time I left a pizza here, it magically disappeared. I mean, it's just like leaving candy around me. It's not gonna be all right, I'm a... National Pizza Party Day! Ladies and gentlemen, Pizza Pizza. The weekend. Alright, cool. National uh, Pizza Day. I've never turned down a pizza pie. Welcome to the 93X Half Fast Morning Show, Friday morning broadcast, and all that. Say hello to my pizza faced on air partner, Josh. Hey, <laughs> that's not cool. You know, my brother, who uh, ended up going into the same career, once uh, called a police officer a pizza face. It's one of my favorite stories you've ever told on the program. <laughs> yeah, my parents used to tell us a story about when uh, we were, my, my dad was pulled over. My dad was a very aggressive driver. Very aggressive. Hard rights and oh, lefts. A yeah. lot of gas, a lot of brake. And there'd be <laughs> like a buildup if he was going to honk the horn, which he loved to use, by the way. There'd be a buildup where he's kind, you can see him like, Almost like in a uh, like a video game or some sort of um, movie where they can shoot fireballs out of their hands. There's a buildup of power, and then he would hit that horn with as much gusto as he could. Son of a bitch! Yeah, I just he was so I, I don't know why exactly he got pulled over. He gets pulled over, and uh, the guys, the cop is talking to my dad, and my brother said, "Hey, get out of his face!" Or no. Yeah, get out of his face, pizza face, or something like that. Or get out of our space. <laughs> oh, pizza I know face. what it was. Get off his case. That's what it was. Pizza face. Yes, get off his case, pizza face. Your brother said that to an officer of the law. He did, and uh, the guy started laughing and said, all right, get out of here. And now my brother's a police officer, and I hope somebody makes fun of his complexion because it's very pockmarked. Mm. He's very pale, (laughs) and he's got a bald spot that he refuses to acknowledge at the very top of his head. (laughs) It's up there. If you're uh, one of his partners there, take a look. It's there. Look. He does have a very defined helicopter pad uh, on top of his skull. Yeah, and he likes to give me crap about going bald. Doesn't make any sense. No, I don't get it. You've got this wacky-looking... Like it looks like an ass. Yeah, it does. Uh, right on top of his head. It's and it's 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 off color. It, it's yes. off putting, really, to look. It at is it. off putting and off color. That's uh, that's uh, one of my favorite stories. Uh, get off his face. Uh, pardon me, but uh, get, uh, get, get, get off face. his. Mediocre machinist Jesus. They're having a pizza party at work today. Ah, oh, lucky. I Knock wore the only pizza up. clothing I have. You wore pizza clothing? Yeah, you know, uh, I mentioned this when they sent it. The folks at Devani's are so good to us. And uh, they made me a Devani's sweatshirt that says Josh on it. That's my name. That's so cool. And then I'm wearing my Devani's t-shirt underneath this. You look like uh, you'd be in the back um, making sandwiches. I was wondering, yeah, if I could get in trouble for impersonating a a pizza maker or something like that, wearing these clothes. You also have the basketball shorts, so it kind of makes you look like a delivery driver because you know you're running from house to house, back in and out of your car. And I do have experience in that. Yeah. Josh and I were talking hoops before we uh, before we went on the air. Big win for the Wolves last night. That was an old school curb stomping. <laughs> that was Boy. so fun. I, I mean, they're up. By, I, I know it was kind of garbage time towards the like the middle of the fourth quarter. Right. But they're up by 50 at one point <laughs> against the champs. Yeah, did they bring the JV squad or what happened? There? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were they saying? Like the Denver bench did nothing like literally nothing for most of the game it was Just one of those games it up <laughs> it's one of those games like in youth basketball where the coach would be like all right you all need to touch the ball twice before you can shoot now stop embarrassing these kids <laughs> yeah that was fun uh, that was an old school pump down yeah they got pumped 
And now, all they got to do is win one more. And oh. we can put Jokic and Mura and all those other puke bags out of their damn misery for this basketball season. And when Nick and I were talking about it before the game, I, uh, I told him, and I, you know, I should thank this gentleman on the air, uh, Mike Conley Jr. Um, I've mentioned before, my wife, she likes basketball. Um, and she, uh, she really likes Mike Conley Jr., not just because he's an incredible ball handler, but because he's, she finds him to be the most handsome guy on the team by far. So with the excitement of last night, Conley Jr.'s back. You get to see a lot of him. He's having a great game. Had a nice game, didn't he? It got her riled up. Sure. And I benefited from that before bed last night. Was it too late? It was, but it was worth staying up for. So thank <laughs> she, uh... you, Mike Conley Jr. You didn't want to be a part of this our marital bed right you were last night not to be <laughs> crass but mike conley jr puts your wife uh how do you say it in the mood yeah absolutely is she is this uh is this it for her is she finally now in love with mike conley jr is she finally gonna uh, settle for one man because she falls in love with all different athletes is mike she finally does. the one uh, i don't know he's one of many okay but, i mean right now he's the it man. Isn't it sure. time for her to settle down and just be in love with one man? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Right. <laughs> As her husband, I wish she felt that way. Yeah, she just seems to bounce from this athlete to that athlete. She falls in and out of love. I'd like to see her settle down. See, I get uh, that kind of result, Josh, uh, anytime uh, me and the freaking wife, anytime we might go and see Kip Winger in concert. Oh, really? I'm going, I'm going to be ravaged that evening. <laughs> After she watches Kip, Kip Winger? Winger, I mean, I cannot. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I don't. He's a great guy. He's a talented guy. He's a handsome guy. He's a guy. He and, is a guy. And did she, did she, I never tell you that uh, she was a massive fan of Kip Winger? You might have said some. You might not have just said it was specifically her. That's great to hear. I yeah. love Kip Winger. So I mean, even a music video, you know, doesn't have to be a live concert because some of you might be saying, "Well, they only they come to town once every two years." Uh, you're pretty hard up, son. You might be thinking it's not just in concert. A music video. She uh, follows him on social media. So if she gets. If she gets a dose of Kip Winger, she's at least going to look my way uh, around bedtime. That's pretty cool. And uh, I, I knew it, too. Like, during the game, I thought, here we go. I can tell. You she's, can tell. Uh, she's, I'm, I'm going to put, uh, maybe, you know, I wonder how close we are to where she makes me wear his jersey. You know? <laughs> like, uh, no, 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 you're not getting anywhere near me unless you put this jersey on. You'd look pretty cute in a Mike Conley Jr. jersey. Oh, I don't know if I have the arms for it. Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, I could grow his beard. Yeah, you could. My old lady, uh, her ringtone, uh, or no, sorry, her uh, alarm on her cellular telephone to wake her up is uh, Miles Away by Winger. Oh, really? That's yeah. a great song. It's a borderline obsession. That's great. But she's loyal to one man, Kip Winger, where your old lady... Yeah, her, her loyalties will switch. As long as the dude is on television and performing a sport, uh, she uh, she falls in love. And I understand why. He's, he is a handsome guy. Speaking of all this kind of stuff, wives and whatnot, uh, here's a report that says men are, more, men are more likely to be friends if they do not share the, ta the same taste in women. I'll give it to you one more time because that was rough. Men are more likely to be friends if they do not share the same taste in women. Makes I can, sense. Yeah. So, I can see the logic there, um, but I've got friends where we have the exact taste in women. We're tight. Yeah. Um, we, our, our tastes are a little different at times, I think, um, but, you know, we can both appreciate uh, pretty much any woman. Yeah. See, that's where I was going to go with this. Um, I don't really have a type. My wife thinks I do, but I don't. I'll bang anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really have a type. Qual or quantity over quality. Any damn thing. <laughs> you know, that's because you're a good, accepting person. You, you know, just want to be banging. That's oh, right. Right. Yep. He just wants to be banging. Some guys want to do better. I just want to be banging. <laughs> <laughs> it was a small scale study. You know, they talk to women. They talk to men. They were shown photos. They had to rank the photos. Photos of women and men, of course. And they had to rank them. 
And then they went into some kind of a speed friending event where they interacted, this and that. Anyway, they found that men were more likely to bond with other men that had different preferences in women. Hmm. That makes sense. I mean, there's you don't feel like you're going to compete. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not interested in the same prize. I, I didn't think of it that way. I, I'm assuming that's got to be exactly mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You're probably right, son. Well, you know what? You've told us in the past you do have a type, and I, I thought it was three specific things. Yeah. Um, you're, as far as women. Yeah. For the longest time, I got a little older, I grew up. <laughs> but for the longest time, um, I, I, I was looking for three things in a woman. And that was uh, money. Yep. A big ass and a lethal heart condition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if a woman had those three things, wads and wads of money, a fat can, and a really dangerous heart condition, I was drawn to them. Your um, ex-wife for sure had one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I don't, I never really checked out uh, because I'm a gentleman if she had the, the butt. Did she have a big... I don't... She was very thin. Yeah, she was a skinny lady. Uh, she had a, a nice bottom. But I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, describe... You played some Martin Lawrence there in the intro? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't describe her bottom the way Martin Lawrence describes women's bottoms when he says, Kablizizow. <laughs> <laughs> she had a nice bottom, but I wouldn't say it was... Kablizizow. Yeah, so I, I've got a buddy who... Um, his wife, you know, he's like... He comments on how big her butt is all the time. And I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not just making this up, you know, to sound a certain way. But I really never looked. I, I never looked. And he's like, you got to look. And it felt awkward that he's telling me to look at his wife's butt, right? So he's having a barbecue. We're over there. He's like, okay, take a look. Look right now. And I looked. I don't know how I missed this thing. His wife has. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, it, today's terms, and I'm sorry to use this, but I hear the kids say it all the time. She has a gap. Is what she has. This thing is really, really big. 20, <laughs> not, not like a bad way, but it it doesn't make sense. It could be an end table. <laughs> it's confusing. Fifteen or so years ago, you would have said badonka donk. Yeah. Uh, but now you, it's called a gat. Yeah. Yeah. So you never like noticed gat- that your friend's yeah. wife has a big fat ass. And he's been one of my best friends for years. And then when you finally looked, you said, "Well, by damn, my yeah, it's, goodness." It's kind of one of those things where, you know how, you know, people, a lot of people have friends that are in bands, and they always say how good they are, and you always think, oh, okay, I'm sure they're great, yeah. That's why we've all heard of them, and then you see them, and they are great. Oh, right. yeah. Uh-huh. It was kind of like that. Like, I thought he was overselling it, but he wasn't at all. I, if anything, he undersold it. You know, you always remember a big bottom. <laughs> <laughs> So my grandma used to always tell me. I want to see that in cross-stitch framed on my wall. <laughs> live, life, uh, lo- what's the thing again? Live, L- life, love. Live, laugh, love. Oh, laugh. Live, laugh, love. You, you yeah, live, yeah. you laugh, you love, you have that on the wall, and then right next to it it says, you always remember a big bottom. It's true. It's true. Um, and I know some of you are going to say, does this guy ever stop talking about his friggin' wife? But I have to make another reference to I know it. I feel that way about myself. I apologize. My friggin' wife. Oh, God, 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, I met one of her girlfriends, and I was immediately drawn to this woman because she had a massive uh, dumper. And, I mean, I remember asking uh, my now friggin' wife, who is that lady? You know, she just was hauling around this huge, beautiful backyard. I bet the two of us haven't, I bet I haven't seen that big backyard gal in maybe since that night, 15 years ago. You following where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. I think I met this gal once or twice 15 years ago. I don't think I've seen her since. But my friggin' wife will bring her up once in a while, and this is the way it always plays out. She's like, oh, you know my friend Missy? And I'll go, who? And she'll go, the gal with the big fat ass. And I'll go, yeah, <laughs> go on. I remember. I, I remember that's, you never forget it. What happened there? Okay. There was uh, one that um, I remember specifically because I was at a bank getting a mortgage, right? And sitting across from the, the woman who was uh, doing the paperwork and stuff. And she's like, okay, I just got to grab something from the printer. 
She stood up, and I thought it was a bit because her top half and bottom half looked like it came from two completely different <laughs> people. <laughs> I, that is, I've never seen s- such a difference in my entire life. You never forget. <sighs> I almost wonder, is it one of those situations where she was cut in half in a bad accident and they just stitched together whatever they had? <laughs> yeah. It's got to be. <laughs> this is all we got. Some kind of medical miracle? Yeah, we, we, all we have is the bottom half of someone four times your size. I'll tell you what, you never forget. And we love, we love those big bottoms. But as we established earlier, uh, we'll really, for the most part, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take anything. Just... We, we like the big butts, but overall we're not picky and we will uh, we'll accept anything. Yeah, I, uh, my, my wife is always saying, oh, I'm not your type, whatever. But I really don't think I have a type. And I, she can't really explain what type she thinks I have. <laughs> it's confusing to me. Your type is just willing. <laughs> <laughs> Not a douchebag. That's pretty much all I care about. A pulse. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you know, I've, I've probably bounced around during my adult life. Drawn to one type for a couple of years, then drawn to another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. definitely. I used it's... to like heavy, heavy drinkers, <laughs> heavy drinking ladies, cigarette smoking, foul, foul language. I like the rough ones for a while. I like the ones that walk up to you at the bar and be like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I like the rough party all night. But then I went this way. I went that way. You know, she. You don't have to have one type forever and ever. I'm not trying to be gross, but it's personality. I mean, because you can't be with someone who you just don't want to be around because their personality sucks. But for me, that's more what it is than necessarily a particular type. Personality. Again, I'm not trying to be disgusting. (laughs) No, no, no. We understand. Speak out of turn. Personality. Waple, you've said in the past that all you really care about is she has hair. Yeah. That's it. Uh, hair, a voice. Uh, what was the other eyes? Thing? Didn't you eyes. say eyes? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hair, voice, eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> does your girlfriend? Uh, well, you're not going to answer truthfully if it's not the case. But does she have a nice voice? I guess I I haven't noticed. She has a very very good singing voice. Oh, she very can sing. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to hear that. Maybe she could sing at our uh, Brotherhood uh, Border Bash deal. Oh, our, what? Yeah. What, which one is that? His girlfriend. No, I mean... Oh, the wh- Border Bash? Wisconsin. The oh, casino. No, we're not going to have her sing. Why not? Because we're trying to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it'd be a good time. Maybe because we'll be blown away by her voice, or it'd be good comedy. It could be either or. Yeah, her um, her mom was a bartender for years and years, so she would always go to the bars after hours on karaoke nights, and she would just sing. Oh, cool. What's her That's specialty? Adorable. What kind of music? Um, Like Melissa Etheridge. Okay, we, we've decided now. She's not going to be. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that, that seals it. I, all right, yeah, I didn't consider that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dumbass welder Jesus reminds us it's either a zero or a one. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If anyone's singing out in Wisconsin at our casino party, it's going to be me. And I heard a song on the way in, Josh, that I'd like to sing to all of you. You're the keeper of the seven keys <laughs> that locks up the seven seas. 651-989-9393. Name the band. Well, what if I know it? Uh, uh, I sometimes know, I, I, know sit you these know. Out. I sit these out for I, yeah, somebody else. Yeah, you know. All right. 651-989-9393. Tell me the band. Uh, tomorrow, uh, according to astrology... <laughs> I don't follow astrology. Did you ever read your horoscope back Never in the once. Now, keep in mind, there was a lot less entertainment growing up. And so you had to, if you got done reading the cereal box, a lot of times you needed something to look at when you're eating your Fruit Loops or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so I would read the comics, and then if I still had time, I'd read Dear Abby. And then if I still had time, <laughs> I would read the horoscope just to see what I was looking at for that day. Gee, you did yeah. a lot of reading. I always read I the horoscope. Read. After never the bothered, comics. never bothered with that crap ever. I always thought it was just the silliest nonsense in the whole world. How do you call it? Astrology. And thank you. Many of you have been texting in with the correct answer uh, to the band. Um, Can I make I, sure I'm correct? Well, I, I, I know sing. I'm right. I just want to say the first one to get it correct was CFH bass player Jesus. Go ahead, oh, you know stuff. Halloween. Halloween, mm-hmm. keeper of the seven keys that locked up the seven seas. 
Okay, astrology. According to folks that uh, get involved in that, uh, tomorrow is the luckiest day of the year. Has anyone got anything going on where you might need a little luck? I'm thinking of changing my cell phone plan, and I have an appointment at the store. Whoa. Oh, my God. An appointment. <laughs> Don't <and everything>. do it. <laughs> Maybe they'll tell me uh, we got a way to save you a couple of bucks. Don't do it. Not not providers, just the plan in general. Oh, okay. Yeah, same provider. Okay. You going up or down? What do you mean? Oh, like, in the plan? Yeah. I Just different. Okay. Yeah. A lateral uh, move. Gotcha. You're uh, doing something with your cellular telephone. God, nobody's crazier on the weekends than Josh. Oh, you know what else? I saw yesterday uh, com- during the game, there was a commercial for a zero-turn mower, and I want one so bad. Stop talking oh, about mowers I, and just do it. it Are you talking about the electric one? Don't say that in case I get crap, but that's the one that I saw. That one was sweet, though. It did look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, Every I, couple like I said, of weeks. I can't, I, I want one bad, but I can't justify it. My lawn's not that big. Justify, schmustify, buy a mower. <laughs> the, the people look like they're having so much fun. You're always going back and forth with the mowers. Just do it. And all you got to do is put four giant batteries in there and that's it. And you can also use the batteries for a leaf blower. I saw that. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> Man, never heard anybody Hem and haw about lawnmowers. Oh, I've been edging for this thing forever. <laughs> you got to just do it. Uh, yeah, I, pull I wanna, the trigger. I, I just, I, I should just get a strip of land somewhere that I can, you know, it would make sense to mow with a riding lawnmower. I'm sure there's some people out there that'll let you come over yeah, and, and then mow their lawn. But then the I'm going to get some sort of trailer or something like that to mm. bring it. I've always wanted one. It's going to be an expensive day. You do. The, you, <laughs> you realize you're you're having the same conversation with yourself that you had two weeks ago. Oh, about. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we even talked about it on the air. Yeah. My God. Uh, so tomorrow's the luckiest day of the year. It has something to do with astrology. I was going to make some kind of joke about uh, the planets, but I couldn't come up with anything funny. Can anyone got any kind of a planet joke? Uh, well, of course. Get lucky with Ur- Uranus? Uranus, I mean. You dicks. Well, I mean, you know. It's the obvious that's, one. That's the one. Right we, there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Jupiter's mentioned in here. So you don't, there's nothing at all. Let's say it said, to, hey, really don't make a, a big decision today. Today. You know, Mercury seems to always be in retrograde. Right? Yeah, I always hear that. Uh, yeah. Mercury's in, in retrograde. Don't make a big decision. So that if you had a big decision that you could make today or tomorrow, let's say today's the day you don't want to do it, would you wait till tomorrow? No. I, Not at all? Mm-hmm. No. You, would, you, would it even enter your mind? No. No. Astrology's never played a role in my life even a little bit. Why? Would you, you, you would maybe change... Uh, the date of an important this or that because of astrology? No, I wouldn't, but I think what I would do is, let's say it didn't work very well, like it, it worked out poorly, I would wonder, why the hell did I just wait till the next day? I was told Mercury was in retrograde and I didn't pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So I would have so that regret. After the fact, you might blame a bad outcome on astrology. Yeah, if it didn't work out. Ah, well... F me running. I didn't know. I didn't know that it ever came into play in your life either. Usually when I read my horoscope, I forget about it like five minutes later. So it doesn't really matter that I'm reading it. Uh, well, you don't go back and like review your day and see if it matched up with the horoscope? <laughs> no. Okay, good. <laughs> Do you, did anybody here read their horoscope? No. No. Come on with that stuff. I dated a girl once who was so into it and all of the signs and the retrogrades and the everything, and she'd talk about energy, and I was like, oh, I cannot handle this. She was into the uh, horoscope? Oh, my. Every, every single aspect that? about that. I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> I don't she believe a, a word of it. Not a word of it. And what I mean by that is that you dated. Oh. <laughs> uh, here's a, a text from Wife Plowing Jesus. He says, There will only be eight planets left after I destroy Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's the way to tell the Uranus joke yep. right there. That was perfect. Aggressive. Yeah. And uh, I, it was in a different direction. I wasn't expecting it like that. I got to ask you something now, Josh. I've been uh, watching, of course, the Timberwolves games. And they keep running an ad for a motion picture. It looks like something that that might have your fly going up and down like a window shade. Which one? Uh, the 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 movie uh, Fura Fura Furatosas. Yes, Furatosas. Fura. Yeah, I'm a Furiosa. I'm a Furiosa. Big... The it's a Road Warrior deal. 
It is. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy stars as Furiosa, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. That looks kind of cool. Oh, well, I God. liked Furry Road. Um, and oh, I know I you did too. About, yeah, Furry Road. I, I forgot about Furry Road. The only thing about Furry Road I didn't like is it. at times it's just, and that's kind of how those movies are. It's like a little too weird, yes. you know? Mm-hmm. Like the milking thing. And, and why, you know, yeah. the, the, the guy playing the guitar on the front. <laughs> <laughs> the flames. I don't know. I mean, I, you know. Well, they don't teach their own, but I thought, I don't know if I needed that in there. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I, I've, I've continually forgotten to ask you about this, but I keep seeing ads for fur, Furiosa? Furiosa. Furiosa. And yeah, I, um, like I said, Anya Taylor-Joy, if I, I, if I don't really have like big celebrity crushes, but if I had to name someone, I, it would be her. I've heard you uh, wah-wah-wee-wah her name in the past. Uh, I... Road Warrior, the original. Um, it's all right. Yeah, I like those movies. And then you moved on. No, not Road Warrior. Sorry, Mad Max. Mad Max, was, yep. Mad Max mm-hmm. was the original. And, yeah, I mean, it's quirky, like 1980. I loved Beyond Thunderdome. Cheaply, and see, I never saw it. Oh, Tina Turner, man. Mad Max, the original, cool. Road Warrior, still to this day. I love that movie. Now, there's a couple people telling us it's uh, called Fury Road, not Furry Road. No, mm-hmm. it's definitely Furry, Furry Road. Furry Road. Yeah, it's Furry we, Road. We both yeah. saw the movie. Yeah, I've seen the movie. It's yeah. Furry Road. Road Warrior, still badass after all these days. And Wapple, I bet you giggle uh, whenever you watch Road Warrior. Uh, you giggle when the one dude is introduced as the Ayatollah of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> totally. um, so Nightblood Jesus wants to know if I've seen The Queen's Gambit starring Anya Taylor-Joy. Yes, oh, that's yeah. where I became familiar with her. And Dana and I talk about this sometimes. It's about chess. It sounds like it's really dumb, but I can't explain at all why, but it is very, very good. She makes chess sexy. <laughs> she, it's, it's, it's all nothing her. Nothing to do with her ass? Mm-hmm. It's all chest? <laughs> no, no, chess. Oh, chess. Yeah, chess. Oh, with two S's <laughs> two at the end. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I thought no you were T. making a reference to uh, her body. No. Oh. No, no I, I'm not, but it's, it's, a, it's excellent. Yeah, it's and very enthralling. And I can't explain it. I cannot <laughs> tell you why it's good. It just is. So when do folks get to go see Fura, Fura Rosa? Is it next week? Yep, okay. next week. All right. You Unless know, you for, want to make your way to Australia. It comes out a little bit earlier in Australia. Oh, I don't know. I've never been that far north. It's, yeah. right, it's just right over the border. Yeah. Still, that's, that's I a still pull. haven't been there. That's the last place I'm going during the Stanley Cup playoffs. <laughs> It'll be madness oh, up there. Oh, that's true. Traffic would be unbelievable. I'd never go to Australia during the Stanley Cup. <laughs> uh... You know, for you old school rock fans, if you remember Road Warrior with Mad uh, with uh, Mel Gibson, Road Warrior, nineteen eighty one, two, it was one of those. Definitely, years. yeah, it was one. Yeah, it, one of those. it was one of those. You know the uh, the little blonde character who's kind of kept on a leash. Yeah. Um, Vince Neil completely stole his wardrobe from that character. For the 1983 Shout at the Devil tour, <laughs> look it up. Look it up. Vince Neil, when he, when I Garrett, when I don't know if we've ever asked Vince Neil about this. When he saw Road Warrior, he said, "I'm going to dress like that blonde character for the next year and a half." That's how influential the movie was, really, on on everybody. Rock, the rock scene, you know, the movie scene. Yeah, and it was um, you know, one of those movies where, especially if you watch it years later, and I a few years ago, I kind of watched, I went through all of them. And I didn't realize as a little kid how weird the bad guys were. You know, oh, it's, it's a yeah. different style of bad guy. They're just odd. <laughs> they are. They're not they really are. intimidating outside of they're just so weird. They're it's dorky a, almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're they're like nerdy and it's just, it's odd. I'm telling you, look at a picture of the blonde character from Road Warrior. Look at a picture of Vince Neil from the uh, Shout at the Devil tour. You know what I'm talking about. Dude, if you Google search Vince Neil, um... What pops up next is dressing like Mad Max. Oh, really? <laughs> really? There's an yeah. article on it? No, just in my Google searches, for some reason, whenever when Nick said that, I started typing it and it popped up. Re- really? That uh, That's a bizarre kind of a... That's astrology at work right yeah, there. That yeah, that is. Mercury that and retrograde, yeah. bros. All right, we got to get going for real skis. I wish this was the end of the show, but it's not. Uh, we have to keep going. 
just because it's Friday. I don't want to be here anymore. But I wish this was the end of the show, but we're just getting started. Uh, later on this morning, Michael Grady. That's something to look forward to. Yeah, it is. Cool. It is. That's I'm, an easy and fun interview. He is a great, great guy, lead announcer for the Timberwolves. He'll be in a good mood. Michael Grady's going to join us to talk about, by God, uh, the Timberwolves and this big game seven. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. Hell, we got all kinds of things going on. The stupid news will be coming up here before you know it. We'll be right back. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future. And we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the Just Capital seal. Bank of America is ranked number one for ongoing commitment to their workers with initiatives like Sharing Success, which awarded 97% of their teammates additional compensation, nearly all in stock. This is the program's seventh consecutive year, awarding more than $4.8 billion in total. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. I got to admit, I wasn't ready for that. Came quick, didn't it? Yeah. Snuck up on me. Here we go. I got, I've got, i got a fresh stupid news report in front of me. Uh, but before we get there, Josh told us earlier uh, that today is National Pizza Party Day. And a listener texted in about it. Uh, that listener says, I've been saving a pizza dis ass. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving a pizza this ass for y'all <laughs> for a long time. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you as well. Mm. Take a bite out of that. Would you? Mm-hmm. Just a rando? Oh, yeah, I'll take that all the way to the cross, baby. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you will. I like that about you. I like that about you. You're not shy. All right. Let's go ahead and see uh, where we stand On the latest silly Reddit argument, let's uh, join in with the 8th graders and the social media dorks and chime in with our opinion on the lives of complete strangers. The latest topic of conversation over there on Reddit is about a guy who did not tell his wife about a terrible crime that was committed in their house until after the old lady moved in. The wife, she upped and left when she found out what happened in the house. And the husband, he went ahead and told his story in the am I the a-hole section. You know that deal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some fun stuff in there. Probably mostly fake, but still kind of (laughs) entertaining. Folks tell their stories on the am I the a-hole Reddit page and then other people hanging around give their opinion, just in case you weren't familiar uh, with the routine. So in the post, the dude says he's 34 years old. Nine years ago, he bought a house. He was informed that a murder-suicide occurred in the house years before he bought it. And he said that he, quote, didn't think much of it. The price was right on the house. He dug the location, the whole kit and caboodle. Five years after buying the jerk, he met a gal, and he went ahead and married her last year. Jennifer is her name. So now we got the dude and his wife, Jennifer, living in the house together. Cute, right? Yeah. It's American dream. When I took her to my house for the first time, she fell in love with it, he said. That is until she recently learned what happened there many years ago. Dude said, the other day, Jennifer was at the grocery, and she got into a conversation with an elderly woman. The woman asked where she lived. 
Jennifer described the location. And the woman said, ah, the old Johnson house, eh? (laughs) A lot of history in that house. (laughs) Terrible what happened over there. (laughs) And the old lady explained everything that happened in the house. This, This new information did not sit well with the wife. She goes back to the house in a friggin' panic. She told the husband about the murder-suicide. And dude said, yeah, I already knew about that, but I never really cared. Jennifer couldn't live in a place where something so terrible had happened. Dude said to her, well, that's what you've been doing for the last year and a half. So, you know, suck it up. His wife then dramatically left the house. She packed up her stuff and she said, deuces. Okay, she didn't literally say that. But the other <laughs> night I was at the bar. The other night I was at the bar and I cracked up like a bitch. This gal friend of mine, we were shooting pool. And when she left, she said, she put up two fingers, Josh, as she left. And she said, deuces. I, I haven't heard that before. Neither really? had I. Neither had I. Yeah, so I there's thought. no other reference. That was just a farewell. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we used to say that all the time in high school. Oh, yeah. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very common. I yeah. laugh my nuts off. Deuces. Anybody know the origination or why you say something yeah, like that? That's a good question. Well, it's an alternate version of peace. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, because you're putting up two fingers. The two fingers. Oh, oh, okay. Deuces. All right. So if I just walked out and said deuces, if I don't put the two fingers up, I made a fool out of myself. I'm a damn fool. Likely, yes. Josh you, walks out of the bathroom. Deuces. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> don't walk out of the bathroom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we know what we know what just happened in there, <laughs> and you know what, Josh? No, we know about your history with that. Good for you, man. We're yeah. happy for you. You know what? You guys would rally around that. Wouldn't they, you? Sh- we would. they should have a party for you. <laughs> yeah. We're good friends. They get the servers out, and everyone's clapping. <laughs> hey! He's no longer constipated. <laughs> Deuces. Deuces. I'm gonna start using that. Can I? Oh, I thought it was great. I thought, it, like I said, I laughed my nuts off. I'd never heard anyone say that before. But I don't have to, like, earn it in any way. I can just start saying it. You don't have to earn jack squat. All right. Your cubby. I'll take it to the crust. <laughs> so, again, dude, dude lives in a house. There was a murder-suicide there before he bought the house. Now the wife moves in. She didn't know dick about it for a year and a half. She finds out about it. She's furious. She refuses to live there. She moves out. She keeps calling dude telling him to sell the house they're arguing about the house she's living with her with her folks now dude in this reddit post he said she seems really upset about my not telling her but as i said before i legitimately didn't care enough to even remember see i'm not buying that you remembered who for, yeah, who forgets Th- that's that? You not were something keep- that would slip your mind. No. no. You were keeping it a secret because you knew it would cause a problem. No one forgets that a damn murder-suicide happened in your damn house. Don't be a douche. <laughs> so he posed the question to the eighth graders and the fully grown dorks hanging out on Reddit. He asked, should I have said something about this to her before she moved in? What do you think? I think it's something you mentioned because mm-hmm. you know that obviously... It affects quite a bit of people if they're going to drop a hundred grand from the asking price, right? Yep. Mm. I didn't mention that part. Oh, sorry. I, I, no, no, that's fine. I, uh, obviously, that's fine. Uh, that was part of what drew him to the house. Yeah. It was cheap, cheaper because of the murder suicide. Yeah. So I mean, that's built in. As to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We realize this house is far less desirable because of that. Uh, I mean, do you care? Uh, an etiquette and communications expert chimed in on this, okay? Oh, uh, wow. It's going to be my time. next career. Yeah. That person said that the situation is very complicated and there is really no right answer. Okay, you don't need a degree. <laughs> you don't need a degree to come up with that one. He yeah. pretty much just said, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reddit nerd said this and that, of course. One dork said, you know, if your wife wants to go uh, where no one has ever died before, I suggest she volunteer to be one of those people who colonizes Mars. (laughs) Weirdo. (laughs) 
Shut up, dork. <laughs> that added a lot to the conversation. Thank you. Very practical suggestion. And I'm sure it was one of those where he sniffed afterwards. Like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'll get some good response out of that one. Yeah, he wants to likes. Just, I'm a wants, genius. He wants to broadly generalize, well, everywhere you go, someone's died. Yeah, we get that. Oh, okay. is that so? Is that right? And you're just a, out of a, curiosity, uh, was it murder, suicide as right, well? Right, <laughs> right. Are you sleeping there night in, night out? No. <laughs> So, again, I'm not buying the I didn't think about it or the I forgot routine that this guy is putting on. There was a damn murder in the house. I bet he tells all of his buddies every night he goes to the friggin' beer hall. I bet he tells the story over and over. You know the house I live in? Yeah. There was a murder-suicide there. I bet he talks about it all the time. But he doesn't tell his lady because he knew. He knows her. He knew that she would get squirrely at the thought of living there. He didn't have the balls to tell her. You lack balls, bro. God, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for old Miss Sanderson down at the grocery store. She knows everything. She's plugged in. That town gossip. And, you know, he's not necessarily an a-hole, but he ain't got no balls. You tell people stuff like that, and then, uh, I never even thought of... Yes, you did. And I kind of wonder if maybe part of it for her is, um, you know, that she's... Why didn't you tell me? It makes it worse. And she might have been okay with it. Well, oh, did you say a hundred grand is off the top of this thing? And this is the house. I love this house. Yeah. Part of it maybe is there are some people they want to know every damn thing. And she deserves to know that. She does. She lives there. She sleeps there. She deserves to know that. 100%. And she's probably going to find out because a simple Google search of the address is probably going to pop up that a horrific crime like that happened there. What's that? If you Google, you're like, say she's going to Zillow the house to see the worst. So she Googled the address. You're going to find, you're going to, that's probably going to pop up when you look up the house address. Okay. Yeah. yeah so sure you're you saying she should have looked it up or he, well, no, I, I mean, saying I don't know. The you, news stories usually don't put in an address, but I mean, maybe somebody else like on social media or sure. something did. I don't know. It's just that, that weak on the dude's part. Really weak. Sometimes if the crime's bad enough, they just tear that sucker right down. Mm-hmm. You know? Really? Yeah. They just oh. knock it right over. Unfortunately, I grew up with a kid who committed that type of crime, and they tore the house down. They just tore just the so, house down? Oh, it was very, very dark, yeah. Dude. Even if it's a brand new house? I don't know how old this house was, but it, wasn't, it didn't need to be tore down. It was just because they knew nobody's going to buy this with what happened. Really? All right. So there you go with that one. We just bought a new house, and there's a bunch of pets buried in a cemetery behind it. I don't see anything happening, so we're going to move in without a care in the world. Be yeah, just you should fine. be good. Pet cemetery. <laughs> what a silly ass movie. So dumb. I wonder don't if the book's go up good. That hill. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fred Gwynn knocked it out of the park. There's no doubt about. It. Fred Gwynn's one of the most underrated Hollywood actors to ever live. That guy was such a friggin' stone pimp. And his character is the only likable thing about the Pet Cemetery movie from 1989. I know they've made 79 of them at this point, but you guys, the, the character that Wapple was just doing, that Fred Gwynn. They should have made sequels and prequels with Fred Gwynn's effing character, and that's it. Just have him driving a truck full of turnips from town to town. That's how good that character was. Anybody read the book? No. Uh, no. No. Yeah, I just wonder if it didn't translate or if the book wasn't that great, too, or what. All right. Again, with Thailand, they always seem to be involved in our stupid news reports. Uh, you're probably saying, again, with, with Thailand. But it's not their fault. It really isn't. It seems like all the lowlifes head straight for Thailand. Good for us here, bad for Thailand. Now, I don't think the author of this year's story was paying attention either. Uh, just listen to this. It says here, authorities in Thailand made a startling discovery when they busted open life-size Transformer ro- robot statues. I'll say that again. Life-size Transformer robot statues. They busted them open and found over 700 pounds of something called ketamine. What do you mean life-size Transformer statues? First off, they're not a real thing. Secondly, I saw one of the Transformers movies to see Megan Fox in a jean skirt. Aren't the Transformers about three stories tall? <laughs> yeah, these are more... They're taller than people, definitely, these these Transformers. So uh, they mean people size. Yeah, they're, they're quite a bit taller than people. Um, 
I wanted one, and then I thought Dana would never let me live it down because of how much crap we've given him about having children's <laughs> toys all over his residences. Yeah. You were going to buy... A- oh, I wasn't going to buy... I, when I saw these, I thought I would, if I had the disposable income, I would love to have one of those. They look pretty cool. A Transformer robot character that is stand, it's standing on... And its feet, and it's yep. uh, and it just it just sits in your house, and it's taller than you are. Yeah. So there's a couple of them that look about you know six feet, and then there's a few that look eight to ten feet. Where would you put that in your home? Well, I don't have a space big enough for it. It's kind of like we were talking about the zero turn. More, I, my garage isn't big enough to keep that in cars. So, I, you know, that's one of those things where I could see late at night, going, you know what, F it, click. It's on its way, and then it shows up and go. I don't. I can't even get this through the door. Where, <laughs> where am I going to put this thing? And what is ketamine? Isn't that like a? Um, is that something they treat depression with? Yeah, depression and pain. Pain as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't don't quote me on that. But I thought that's what they use that for. Wasn't it like? Um, oh, oh my gosh, why can't I think of his name? Charlie Sheen. Yeah, he was probably on it. Uh, the Nirvana guy. Why can't I think of his name? Kurt, Kurt Cobain. Yeah, Kurt Cobain. Wasn't Curtis it? Cobain. Okay, so the uh, Transformer statues were loaded with ketamine. So anyway, some lady tried to smuggle a fat ass bunch of dope, this ketamine, inside these Transformer characters. The characters that she uh, got involved: the uh, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Green Light, and others. Bumblebee or Optimus Prime are probably the ones I'd want to. Those are the two big ones. Or Starscream. Maybe Starscream. I always thought Starscream was pretty sweet. I personally, I can't choose. (laughs) It's too much for me. I think you'd be a Decepticon. Definitely Decepticon. To to choose a favorite Transformer, I am not going to commit myself one way or the other. That's too. That's too serious. It's a tough choice. I understand. Because the minute I commit myself to Optimus Prime then maybe Bumblebee does something really cool and I want to go that way and you won't let me. Well, Bumblebee has nothing to say. So you might get kind of tired of that. Optimus Prime, he'll talk your ear off. What was the one that was uh, turned into a tape player in the <laughs> 80s? I thought that was really cool. I have no idea. So you never were into these at all? No. Maybe you're a few years older than me. Maybe that just that little gap. Made no, the Transformers difference. were, uh, I think we, we beat up a lot of younger kids who played with Transformers, I think. I always wanted one of those Transformers. Looks like his name was Soundwave. Oh, yeah, Soundwave. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. (laughs) Soundwave. Ah! All right, these statues were supposedly on their way to, I think, a movie premiere. Is there a new Transformers movie cutting loose on us? Seems like there always is. I thought I saw a promo for something. Maybe. I I, I watched the first movie, and that was about it. Maybe in Thailand they're behind, and they're only showing... Movies from two, three years ago. I don't know how things work in Thailand. Police seized hundreds of pounds of ketamine hidden inside the Transformers. Robots in disguise, I believe the slogan was. Yep. Right, Josh? Mm, that's right. Mm. It's like there's new Transformers coming out in uh, September. Okay, a new Transformers. Well, a bunch of those. Loved the cartoon. Megatron is the best. What the listeners are telling me, Megatron is the best. I think you'd want to be Megatron somebody you'd be interested in. And you think I would be a fan of which one? The Decepticons. the Decepticons. They're the heels of the Transformer yeah, world. Yeah. You would who, definitely be rooting for them. Who's running that that outfit? Megatron. Megatron. Oh, oh, yeah. oh he's a bad guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's the I, guy. I could see Dana being into the Dinobots a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. What was the? Uh, the ba- what were the other ones? The the alternative. Gobots. To- Gobots. That's Go-bots. right. Yeah, I remember. I remember the, the television shows. Yeah, and Gobots. What. The greatest Transformer I ever saw was Goldie Gopher. Um, when he does his Halloween bit yes. where he's walking around the football field and then suddenly he just flops onto his belly and he becomes a, a Transformer. <laughs> Gosh, he he becomes so a, a semi-truck. That'd be Optimus Prime. Okay. <laughs> uh, a couple days ago we were talking about problems with neighbors complaining about what you got going on in your yard. You know, city code violations and whatnot. Here's a small victory for you dorks out there. In England, uh, a dork, he will be able to keep all his Game of Thrones sculptures in his yard, despite the fact that his neighbors bitched that the guy was making their neighborhood look too effing dorky. (laughs) 
I wouldn't complain if one of my neighbors had Game of Thrones stuff out. Oh, I know no, you wouldn't. I, I know think that's you. sweet. I wouldn't either. I would, I would think it was the dumbest thing in the world, but I would never make a phone call on it. I don't care if you've got Game of Thrones uh, characters in your... Dude goes by the name of Lee Morris. He's 52 years old, don't you know? And Lee isn't just a Game of Thrones uh, nerd. He also has airplane statues in his yard. Okay, he's got airplanes and he's got Game of Thrones dragons and such. His, his neighbors were calling the city and saying, Lee's yard looks like a bad gift shop or a cheap-ass theme park. But Lee didn't give two pumps. He thought it was cool. And in the end, the big shots on the local city council or whatever said, more or less, hey, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So get over it, everybody. They're going to let Lee be a dork. I'm glad he gets to keep him. I, I, having a Game of Thrones would be kind of cool. you know. Or uh, Excuse me, like that, that sword throne would be pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah the sword throne, I remember that. You know, uh, Game of Thrones really had me in the beginning. I was seeing a gal who really liked those types of stories, and so she talked me into jumping in on that program. But you know when they lost me? And this is going to go against everything that Game of Thrones fans believe in, I think. What lost me was the dragons. Oh, I like the dragons. Preferred the boobs? I'm not even setting myself up. Well, I'll always choose boobs over dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, are you sure? 651 989 9393, dragon, you're nuts. Well, yeah, I'll throw that. Yeah, I love dragons. Right. Love it. What I'm saying is, I can dig um, wild sex scenes mixed with bloody sword fights, right? I'm on this side, you're on that side. We're going to sword fight until I cut you into a million pieces. Then I'm going to an orgy, right? I can get behind that. But flying dragons, it was too stupid. Well, I know they're extinct, but what makes them stupid? They're beautiful and majestic. Yeah. You're telling me like millions of years ago when dragons totally existed, (laughs) you wouldn't have been interested in seeing one flying around? Nothing like that? Don't do this to me. (laughs) That was the dumb part. Wait a minute. We are having these cool, bloody fights? You know, one-on-one or big battles and I mean, limbs are flying everywhere. And then there's an orgy. And then <laughs> limbs or blood is spraying. And now dragons? That's stupid. This person loved everything about Game of Thrones. Based on this text, he said, I love boobs, dragons across my face. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you mentioned the throne from Game of Thrones. I was at a, one of those nerdy arcade bars, and they had a full-on replica of it. And they were charging, and this was at the height of the popularity of Game of Thrones when it was so hot. They were charging 100 bucks a pop to take your photo in it. Are you serious? And I asked the bartender, I'm like, I don't watch a show, so I don't get it. Like, But people actually pay that? Why do they pay that? And he just kind of points behind him to the bar and all the booze. He goes, drunk people will pay for anything. <laughs> and I, go, I guess that's a good point. I mean, did the money go to charity or something? No. Where you justify was, it? I think it probably went because I'm guessing the throne itself was pretty damn expensive. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know how to take this text from Ask Me About CrossFit Jesus. It's, he said, it's called the Iron Throne. Then he calls us nerds. That we didn't know the actual name of the throne. The Iron Throne. And then called us nerds in all caps and a lot of exclamation points. You guys points are to a pack of nerds. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Zombie Jesus reminds me about the Constructicons. Back to the Transformer theme. Those were the Constructicons. Remember the construction vehicles? Oh, mm hmm. Those were sweet. Yeah, a lot of people like dragons. Oh, no. Mm. These are nuts. You guys can never, you you can never bitch about someone texting in and calling us nerds. You can't. (laughs) You're rolling through all your favorite Transformers and whatnot. All right, this is interesting. Riddle of Steel, Jesus. He sounds like the kind of guy that would know swords, sword movies, and knights and kings and all that. Right? Riddle of Steel, Jesus. Uh, After my statement, my anti-dragon statement. Uh, he said that I should watch a show called uh, Spartacus. No, uh, Spartacus. Spartacus. Yeah, Spartacus. Spartacus. That's pretty good. There's dongs in it. And then dongs get chopped off in it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Just like in Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Oh. Chopping dongs, huh? 
That must be a thing. Not cool. All right. Do I have time for this? This one uh, comes off like big news. Uh, if you understand this type of thing. The deal is, I'll tell you right now, the deal is a 61-year-old German man named Michael Bomer, uh, he has terminal cancer. That's not good. But it says here he's leaving behind an AI version of himself. He's the first, well, we've gone from, uh, you know, uh, 632 AD sword fighting, right, uh, to the wildest technology you've ever heard of in your life. This guy's the first customer for a service called Eternos. And it creates what they do at Eternos. They create your own AI double. He's been training an AI to act just like him and carry on after he checks out. What you do here, Cubby, uh, you tell uh, AI, uh, you tell it your thoughts and memories. It learns to mimic your personality, your voice. Uh, it can then even generate new ideas similar to what you might come up with. Dude, that's how the robots take over the world. There, I was reading that like in China, this is becoming kind of popular. Uh, it says here, they, I don't know who they is, maybe his family. They asked him 150 questions. Uh, Michael Bomber, the guy who's on his way out. They asked him 150 questions about himself and his life. He spent several weeks answering those questions. The point is to give your family something to interact with once you're gone. They can still ask questions and go to you for advice. His great-grandchildren will be able to talk to him or something close to him anyway. This is creepy. It this is. Pretty, pretty cool at the same time, I guess. Well, it's unbelievable technology. I'll yeah. go along with that. I mean, I mean, who could argue that? But this is creepy. Come it's on. Not, you're dead. Do you want some alternate version of yourself saying... I think you should go to college. Yes. You know what I mean? Like a hundred years down the line? Come on. That would probably make it hard for um, like the whole grieving process too. Once you lose somebody, mm -hmm. like if you still have an AI version of them, that might not be like healthy to be doing. Yeah, you're not going to get to the acceptance part of no. the grieving process. <laughs> nah. I saw a great meme on the internet. It said, everybody who's so excited about AI and robots, it's a slap in this guy's face. And it was a picture of Edward Furlong, John Connor, and Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, I don't know. This just, I don't think, I don't think I would want any part of this. I mean, my old man just died, I don't know, a few months ago. I can't imagine bringing my children. Let's say I had little kids. I can't imagine bringing my children. Well, let's ask Grandpa his advice. And it's just some computer mimic of my dad? I'll yeah. tell you what, my old man would want no part of that. He'd say, please don't have a robot me <laughs> sitting in a chair smoking a cigarette like I did for the majority <laughs> of my life. Come on. It's, it's not that expensive. It says here, I mean, you'd think it would be a million dollars. It costs ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Dang. There's already already a wait list to sign up. What if it's one of those things too, where you you, you spend ten fifteen grand, <laughs> all this money, like dozens if not hundreds of hours training this thing with your voice and your likeness, answering all these questions, and it ends up just in a storage place somewhere because you, your kids are like, I don't need all this old crap from my dad yeah. or whatever it is. Would you want your dad is gone now for a long time, Josh? Would you want your son, more importantly, my godson, would you want him going to an AI version of your dad and? Seeking advice and talking to him about wouldn't that just give you a, a chill up your? Yeah, after? that would be weird. I miss my dad every day, but I, I, I don't need that. Your dad wouldn't want that. No, not at all. Good lord, I don't know. I don't know. When I'm gone, just dig me back up when nobody's looking and take me up to BIR. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Fill me full of beard. Take me for a ride on a four-wheeler. Oh, you're going to the zoo one more time. I'm going to the zoo one, more, one more time. more time. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. I was in the locker room. I was talking to a bunch of guys. I'm not going to share one anecdote that showed me how loose they were because I'm not going to embarrass the guy. But 
there was an epic fart that loosened up the locker room a lot before the game. And I'm not going to say who it was because I'm not going to embarrass the guy. That's a... That's a loud song is what that is. <laughs> yeah, you got to turn that down a little bit there, Wapel. That's a little story about the New York Knickerbockers right there in their series against the Indiana Pacers. That's still going. They play tonight, I believe, those two teams. Before game five. So New, New York got whooped in game four. Before game five, the Knicks are in the locker room readying themselves for the game. And they all seemed a little, you know, wound kind of tight. A reporter says somebody launched, you heard him, an epic fart in the locker room. It loosened everybody up. Everybody's having a good time. And they went out and they won game five. I what like a great story. The rally <laughs> fart. That was, that's what it was. Yeah. I've, you, never, I've never heard of a rally fart. That, there was news to me as well. It's incredible. They all had a good time. <laughs> they loosened up. They went out and had a great ball game. That's an awesome story. Where am I going with this? Timberwolves, man, who in the hell would have guessed that the final eight minutes of last night's game would be a junior varsity exhibition? That's just they crazy. They just destroyed Denver. After it was 9-2 Denver, the Wolves said, you know what, F this. I want to play game seven. Everybody go all out. Let's go. They played defense, a full team effort. They destroyed the Denver Nuggets. It was a just a great, great night. Everybody was playing their position, playing defense, and making shots, making shots up and down. Now we got to wait on Sunday's Game 7. We'll get into it, because in about a half hour, Michael Grady, play-by-play man for the Timberwolves, going to join us. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. We'll get into last night's game, because it was a memorable one. I just want to throw this this one note at you about last night's game. Jamal Murrah, he makes Josh sick to his stomach. (laughs) I'm not the only one. Jamal Murrah. After the game, he said it wasn't Anthony Edwards' defense that held him back last night. It wasn't Anthony Edwards' defense. It was his elbow. How difficult did Anthony Edwards make it for you when he was checking you? I mean, who? For me? Yeah. For me? Yeah, for you. I mean, it was less about, it was more about my my elbow at that point. It was more offensively for him. It wasn't him guarding me. He's He's having problems. (laughs) And then a few seconds later, he was like, Oh, I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Having problems with his elbow. Yeah. All right. He even sounded like he didn't believe himself as he was saying that. <laughs> and then I read an article oh, oh, that oh, said. me? Me? Are, are you talking to me? Right. Yes, he's coming up with a lie. <laughs> then I read an article that says Jamal Murrah's elbow could be a big deal in game seven between the Wolves and the Nuggets. Good. I hope it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This isn't about Jamal Murrah's elbow. This is about the Wolves going to the NBA finals. This is about all of us. Every damn last one of us Wolves fans. And you know what? We're going to be dicks about it, too. So (laughs) F your elbow, Jamal Murray. You know what, Josh? I hope by the end of the series, he doesn't even have any elbows. Oh, (laughs) no. Uh, Most guys would likely quit the game of basketball if they were missing both of their elbows. He has no elbows at all? No. By the end of the series, I hope... And I predict that Jamal Murrah will have neither of his elbows. <laughs> He's going to look with ridiculous if he waves. It's just going to be popping everywhere. <laughs> this is not about your elbow, Jamal Murrah. This is about our ability to be dicks. I can't wait to watch Sunday's game with all of our two elbowed athletes yeah. out there playing for the Timberwolves. Another miserable series for the Twins. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, uh, Michael Grady coming up in a half hour, but don't go nowhere uh, because Josh has a, a, a well-put-together news report uh, ready for you. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. Afford Anything talks about how to avoid common pitfalls, how to refine your mental models, and how to think about... 
how to think. Paula, while certainly you can mess up on a million dollars a year, it is far less likely than it is on $30,000 a year. Right. I would meet wonderful people that were struggling with a budget that was super tight. It was 100%. You need to make more money. Make smarter choices and build a better life. Afford anything, wherever you listen. Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. It's beyond comprehension to think that that traffic ticket could put our families and our, our homes in that type of jeopardy. A New York man was arrested and charged with arson this week for allegedly setting the childhood home of a state trooper on fire because he was mad about getting traffic tickets. Ah! 26-year-old Tyler Williams was booked into Orange County Jail Wednesday after he lit up the Warwick house belonging to the father of the trooper in an act of vengeance. For God's sake, he set someone's house on fire? Well, he got some traffic tickets. Oh, oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yes, you right. Can't, you can't ignore that. I had, uh, I, I screwed up. Yeah. Uh, yes, traffic tickets. That's why he decided to uh, possibly kill the people inside. Uh-huh. Early the next morning, the home where the officer grew up and where his father still lives went up in flames. His dad and two other people were in the home at the time, but were able to escape and luckily weren't harmed. Kind of started up there, and then the smoke traveled right through the attic and came out the other end. And uh, he got everybody out of the house. Could have ended bad. A five-month investigation revealed Williams had searched online for personal information about the trooper who gave him tickets, including his current address, just hours after he was pulled over and before the fire at the house. Police say he Googled the state trooper's address in Warwick, went to the home, poured gasoline on it, and set it on fire. The New York State Police commander of the trooper involved said Williams' arrest should illustrate how law enforcement agencies will stop at nothing to hold dangerous criminals who endanger the lives of others accountable for their actions. Ah, my goodness. Overreact much? (laughs) How about that line, yeah. Josh? Over, is that what you'd say if you were the cop and you yeah. ran into this guy? Would you say overreact much? I think that'd be a pretty good one. Or yeah. just simply not cool. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Not cool, bro. An elderly Walmart greeter suffered injuries to his face and head after being punched in the eye by a North Carolina man whose girlfriend was angry she'd been asked to show her receipt at the door. Oh, Overreact much? <laughs> I got him! Oh. The 68-year-old told cops he was checking receipts Monday at an entrance at the Walmart Supercenter. That's when he was confronted by a man upset the victim stopped his girlfriend earlier at the exit. The Walmart employee advised that he's just doing his job. But that wasn't enough to calm the uh, Carolina couple. Mm -mm. 28-year-old Tamisha Robbs began yelling at her boyfriend, you better take care of him. In response to the goading, 27-year-old Trayvon Wadden punched the elderly victim in his left eye, which caused him to fall to the ground and strike his head. Did he go down? He did, unfortunately. Uh, The couple then fled the store heroically. Investigators who were familiar with Robs and Waden from previous calls subsequently arrested the pair at their residence, which is just a few miles from the store. Oh, they, they'd they caused trouble before. Oh, yeah, the, they were very familiar, believe it or not. At the joint. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. A Lake County, Florida man landed himself in jail after he threatened two bartenders with a gun because he wasn't ready for the bar to close for the night. Deputies responded. Overreact to, much? <laughs> Uh, deputies responded to Big Dog Saloon at 2.15 a.m. Sunday in reference to an assault. You ever go have a cold one over at Big Dog's? No, I don't think I could handle it. No? No. Uh, ankle biters. That's more where I'm at. <laughs> there they spoke with two bartenders who said the 39-year-old, Carlton Lacey, pulled a gun on them after they had told them it was time for the bar to close. One of the bartenders said she was telling patrons it was time to leave, and that's when Lacey allegedly grabbed the gun from his waistband and said... Who needs to leave? He waved the gun in the air in her direction. Then another bartender asked Lacey to leave, and he responded by grabbing his gun again from his waistband, this time pointing it at her chest. Keep playing with me, B-word, Lacey told the bartender. Uh, You dumped the B-word. He did. Mm. Deputies located Lacey in the parking lot, but again, heroically, he ran away. This is the kind of guy that's going to go out drinking, carrying around a loaded weapon, pulling it out and pointing it at people. He doesn't blow it on the streets. What, you don't have any beer at home? Yeah. Oh, that kind of gives me an idea. <laughs> What's that? Black-o, black-o. This is the kind of guy that's going to go out and drink and carry around a loaded weapon. Pulling out and pointing at people. He doesn't belong on the streets. Waffle on 93 yards. <laughs> I told you guys, if the clips fit, we'd make more. Uh, police caught up with him, and he was taken into custody. 
A 17-year-old Australian's in police custody after hitting a pedestrian with his vehicle, and his choice of bumper stickers could get him in a little more trouble, well, at least not help his case. About 10.40 p.m. Tuesday, police were called after a 38-year-old male pedestrian was hit by a blue sedan. Police found the abandoned blue Ford parked nearby with the windshield smashed in and a vulgar white bumper sticker that read, I drive like a C-word. The teen... <laughs> who, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, maybe it's an Australian thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know how they are way yeah. up there. And, yep. Yeah, I know the Australians pretty well. Yeah, it gets so cold and snowy. The teen, who was also the sole occupant of the car, suffered minor injuries in the crash and was taken to a hospital for treatment. Always look before you step off an airplane. That's something an Indonesian airline worker learned after plummeting several feet to the ground from a plane after his co-workers inadvertently screwed him over. This is a video you can see on 93x.com where a ground staff member at the Jakarta airport was caught on video falling hard on the tarmac not realizing his fellow employees had moved the mobile ladder away. Oh, no. A cell phone video showed the ground staff member appearing to be speaking with someone inside when he takes a big step backward and fell onto the tarmac, oh, papers no. scattering in the wind. <laughs> the worker appeared to have no idea his colleagues had just started moving the steps away. Authorities are investigating the incident, which appears to violate aviation rules for mobile ladders that need to rep- uh, remain in place until the plane doors are closed. The airline issued a statement citing a miscommunication between the flight coordinator and the passenger boarding stairs officer as a a cause for that accident. Local reports say the man suffered some injuries, but none life-threatening. That looked pretty bad. He landed about as as good as you can in a situation like that. He went backwards? Yeah, he didn't didn't crack his head, which I thought for sure he was going to do. And he's doing all right? It appears that way, maybe just a little embarrassed. Yeah, one of the greatest falls I've ever seen was at an airport. Uh, I was uh, strolling around, heading towards that moving sidewalk. You know that moving sidewalk? Oh, yeah. They, uh, mm-hmm. they set those up now. At the, those are cool. Yeah. Right in front of me, some 109-year-old lady who was carrying everything that she owned, it appeared to me, <laughs> uh, was, was shuffling her way towards the moving uh, sidewalk. And then at the last second, she turned around to wave goodbye to her family one more time. And that moving sidewalk just swallowed her up, and it yard-sailed everything that she had in her hands. Oh, no. And it was effing awesome. Poor lady. (laughs) I I was on the front lines for that, and I've always remained thankful that I was there to see that. (laughs) Music has been taken out of this portion of the Half-Assed Morning Show podcast for licensing reasons. New music out this week includes a couple new solo albums from two great guitarists like former Megadeth guitarist Marty Friedman with Drama. That doesn't sound like Marty Friedman to me. I didn't think so at all either. I actually thought, well, we've got the wrong song, but I guess that's from the album. Is that Marty uh, doing the singing? I forgot to look that up, to be honest. I just assumed he was only on guitar. That will force us to go buy the record. Yep, well, I'm going to download it right this second. Download it. And you, you, you know how to do that, don't you? Slash has a new album out today called Orgy of the Damned. Oh, my goodness. What the, what the hell is this? Sla- yeah, I, I swear we're playing the right clips. It doesn't sound right, but... What, did he, did he get the guy who used to sing with the fabulous Thunderbird? <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. I'll take it. He, he hired the guy from the fabulous Thunderbirds. For the rest of the weekend, rock. Check out 93x.com on our notable new releases playlist on Spotify. When's the last time you listened to Wrap It Up, I'll Take It, by the uh, fabulous Thunderbirds? I couldn't tell you. Dude. Listen, text, and win tickets to Not Fest Iowa all weekend on 93x, featuring Slipknot, Guar, and more. September 21st at Waterworks Park in Des Moines. Guar? Guar. They'll be there. Your first chance to win happens today after 5 with Pablo. I wonder if Guar's latest record sounds nothing like you'd expect, mm-hmm. uh, like the others we've covered this morning. You know what uh, I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely not what I expected. After re- uh, directing two highly successful A Quiet Place movies, John Krasinski trades vicious aliens for something kinder and gentler, Imaginary Friends, in his new movie, If, now in theaters. The family film is about a girl and her upstairs neighbor who can see all the imaginary friends, or ifs, who've been left behind. 
It was written and directed by John Krasinski and includes a big voice cast, including Krasinski, Ryan Reynolds, Steve Carell, Emily Blunt, Maya Rudolph, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Keegan-Michael Key, John Stewart, and the late Louis Gossett Jr. May he rest in peace. Mm. Also in theaters, The Strangers, Chapter 1. After their car breaks down in an eerie small town, a young couple is forced to spend the night in a remote cabin. Panic ensues as they're terrorized by three masked strangers who strike with no mercy and seemingly no motive. The Strangers Chapter 1 is the first part of a horror trilogy to 2008's The Strangers and its 2018 sequel, The Strangers Pray at Night. Really like that original. Creepy, I'm pumped creepy. for this. The Strangers. Yes, that was fun. That was a good movie. Uh, that's, that, that'll give you the heebie-jeebies. Mm-hmm. On the streaming side, Will Forte and Zach Galifianakis are two of the voices behind the new Netflix film Thelma and the Uni- uh, Thelma the Unicorn, available now. The animated adaptation of the children's book series is about a pony whose dreams of becoming a pop star come true. A few items making entertainment news this week. Adam Sandler returning as Happy Gilmore for a sequel to the 90s golf comedy. What happened? Adam Sandler uh, is going to make another Happy Gilmore. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I couldn't possibly care less. Really? That's going to be fun. Well, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go see it. You didn't like the original? <laughs> oh, you don't have to. It's streaming on Netflix. Happy an... Gilmore, right? Yeah. The golfing movie. That's yep. the one. No, it's ha- stupid. You're not interested at all? No, absolutely not. Why would I well, be Well, that in... shocks me. <laughs> I have some information here for you, Josh. You know that uh, Slash clip that you played? Yeah. And I thought it was Kim Wilson from the uh, Fabulous Thunderbirds. Yeah, who can I guess what you're going to say? What? Saying wrap it up and, of course, tough enough, yes. Wasn't it Brian Johnson? People are telling me that was Brian Johnson yeah. from A.C. Adesio. Yeah, Brian Johnson. Didn't sound like Brian Johnson from A.C. I didn't think so either, so I was scared to say it. I, I read it and I thought, well, it doesn't sound like him. Can I do my Angus Young imitation? Why not? Hello, this is Angus Young, and you're listening to 93X. (laughs) You can look that up. That's spot on. That was brilliant. Look it up. Will Ferrell will be starring in a new Netflix show called Golf, his first ever scripted comedy series. He plays a fictional golf legend in a 10-episode comedy, which is Netflix's latest sports-related programming move. I wonder if in one of them he drives around a barricade and gets arrested at 5 a.m. this morning. (laughs) This is absolutely insane. In a blockbuster deal, the streaming service announced Wednesday it'll host NFL Christmas Day games for the next three seasons, and Netflix already confirmed they'll be the new home of WWE Raw starting next year. A couple more things. Jake Gyllenhaal will reprise his role as Dalton in a sequel to Amazon's Roadhouse movie. South Park is going to tackle Ozempic in an upcoming special called South Park, The End of Obesity, which premieres May 24th on Paramount+. And during Warner Brothers Discovery Upfront this week, they released some new photos from season two of HBO's The Last of Us. I love that show. They also unveiled a teaser for the Max series Dune Prophecy, and they announced the new Game of Thrones spinoff, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, is coming next year. Did you already give the plot to the latest Adam Sandler Happy Gilmore movie? No. You didn't? No. Uh, Eastbound at Sundown, Jesus texted in to tell us the uh, plot to the latest Adam Sandler Happy Gilmore movie is he does something that no one has ever done. He goes camping alone. (laughs) whatever I'd like to see something like that it's never been done before how'd they even come up with that it's It's so unusual bizarre plot very unusual former Timberwolf Kevin Garnett turns 48 Sunday Jesus KG's ready to hit 50 Former Timberwolf assistant coach and regular 93X guest Bill Lambeer back in the day Bill Lambeer he'll be 67 Uh, tomorrow Tina Fey 54 Turning 59 today, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Happy birthday to Grower and still isn't a shower, Jesus, on Sunday. He shares his birthday with KG and finds that to be pretty cool. Happy 33rd to Digital Crystal Jesus, who has a weekend birthday. Happy 42nd to Rich. And happy birthday to Calvin, who we appreciate listening on your way to school each day. Happy 14th from Mom and Dad, California Penal League, Jesus. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Big time onions. Goodness. On the half-assed morning show. Dominant, authoritative, bounce-back win from the Minnesota Timberwolves. We'll see you game seven Sunday. 115 to 70 the final. How difficult did Anthony Edwards make it for you when he was checking you? I mean, who? For me? Yeah. For me? Yeah, for you. 
I mean, it was less about it was more about my my elbow at that point. He, it was more offensively for him. It wasn't him guarding me. What do you think led to just the response that you guys had tonight? We got Mike Conley back. <laughs> That was it. Did you really tell the locker room staffer in Denver you were going to be back for Hell games? Hell yeah. They know. I was in there. Yeah, I told them. I said, I'll see y'all motherfuckers for game seven. Day one from day one, he told them. To see you pricks, game seven. That's so, so awesome. That's I love so it. great. And I don't want to hear any more about Jamal Murray's stupid elbow. You know what Jamal Murray can do with his elbow? What? He can shine that bitch up real nice. Turn his elbow. Side. Turn it sideways. Turn it sideways. Hi, Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Mm. I mean, it was a lights out, thorough beating the Wolves hand to Denver last night. A flawless team effort, top to bottom. And we are so yeah. lucky and so happy to have the chance to talk about the Wolves with a guy this morning who has seen every last minute of the Wolves season, call in the action. Welcome back to the program. Timberwolves announcer Michael Grady. Michael, are you there? I'm here. Hey, man, thanks so much for coming back on the air with us. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you sound a little weary, I have to say. Did you party your ass <laughs> off last night or what? <laughs> no, no, job's not finished. Job's not finished, but it was a, it was a uh, fantastic night, um, great environment, and uh, the guys put on a show, and, and it was great to see. I mean, you would have hated to see the season come to a close in front of the home crowd after such a magnificent season. We've seen them fight all year long. And so uh, to see that type of effort with their back against the wall, um, once again, opens up all the possibilities because as we know, anything can happen. Anything in a game seven. Yeah. That's the exciting part of it all. Anything can friggin' happen in a game seven. I mean, I, I, yesterday on the radio, I predicted that the Timberwolves would win last night's ball game, but there's no way I saw that coming, that level of beating. There was no way I thought, with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, that uh, Mike Malone uh, was going to put the JV guys. Let's have it. Let's make a make it a junior varsity exhibition. No way I saw that happening with eight minutes left. With that, with a performance like that, though, it, it's you know to be to be honest, it takes two to tango. Um, on one hand, the Timberwolves put forth their best effort of the series once again in a do-or-die scenario. On the other side of it, um, Denver hit missed shots that we saw them make in games three, four, and five. And so that's part of the equation as well. We saw that elite defense that we saw in games one and two, and then some of the open looks that we saw Denver knock down in the middle games of the series, I just couldn't. And you, I think everybody was kind of wondering would they come back down to earth, uh, given how well they were playing. You know, MVP level for for Jokic, you expect Jamal Murray, you know, hitting half court shots and things like that. Okay, um, but you know, KCP was hitting everything. Uh, Christian Brown was coming off the bench and hitting shots, or Reggie Jackson hitting shots, and just everybody was getting in the mix for Denver. And, I mean, they couldn't throw a beach ball in the ocean um, last night. So you couple that with that increased effort and guys playing like the hair on fire for the Timberwolves, and, and, and you got one of the most lopsided playoff games in NBA history. In NBA history, and yeah. The, the Nuggets didn't have a lot of open looks, but you're right. They did miss those open looks, and that's where a little bit of luck comes into play, which is a beautiful thing. Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder, what are your thoughts on what we saw last night? Well, I think I think Mike. That. I was going to say I think Michael hit on on some something really important here that you know you can't count on the things that happened last night necessarily to happen Sunday. One another thing too, you know we all have a rooting interest in this series. Obviously, uh, we all do. But if you're just a basketball fan watching this series and really don't have a rooting interest, it's kind of been I hate to say this, it's kind of been a dud of a series because no no game has gone down to the last three or four minutes and been in doubt. You know, largely games have been over by the fourth quarter or midway through it. So I kind of have a sneaky feeling game seven is going to go be the one that goes down to the wire a little bit. Well, one thing I'll is this that the- series has been predictably unpredictable. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think anyone anticipated the Timberwolves winning the first two games of the series in Denver. I don't think anyone anticipated Mm-mm. the Nuggets winning both games three and four nope. in Minneapolis. Um, and so, so with game seven's 
I know that the Nuggets are the defending champions, but everyone feels the pressure in a game seven. Mm-hmm. Everyone feels the intensity in a game seven. On one hand, people will say, oh, we give them the advantage because they're at home for a game seven. But there is something to, I don't want to lose this in front of my home fans. There is pressure that comes with, what if we lose this here in Denver? And then you have Anthony Edwards breathing down your neck for <laughs> for, for an entire game. Um I, I really thought that if this had been a close game last night, if the Timberwolves had pulled out a nail biter, then Denver would take that on the chin and say, "Okay, well, this one was close, but now we're heading home. Now we're heading home, and we'll take care of business." Mm-hmm. But when you spack them by forty-five points, they have something to think about now mm-hmm. with the way that the Timberwolves took care of business. So, um, at the end of the day, going back to what I mentioned earlier, it still comes down to making shots. Um, whether open or contested in games three, four, or five, the Nuggets were knocking down the shots. The Wolves had a number of open looks. McDaniels had open looks in game five, couldn't hit them. Reed had open looks, couldn't hit them. They were knocking them down last night. It's just coming down to who hits their shots, especially in the big moments. Effort, defense, rebounding, and making effing shots. Randy Shaver, go ahead. I was just going to say, and I, I agree with Michael, I think the, the, the real key, you know, their defense was great last night, no doubt about it. But it's the fact that their offense finally got untracked after having three games in which they did not shoot the ball very well was the difference in the game. I mean, they were down 9-2 to start the game. There was a great timeout called. And they, instead of letting the game get away, they just took command from that point and then never let go. And, you know... That crowd last night was probably the greatest crowd I've ever seen at Target Center. And, you know, Denver's crowd's going to come after the Wolves on Sunday. There's, I agree. There, there's going to be pressure on both sides to win this Game 7. But we said this the other day. If you can get to the Game 7, anything can happen. It's just, you just never know. And... Uh, I, I think the Wolves have a very good chance on Sunday. Well, to after win last this night, how can advance. you not? Yeah, after last night, how can you not say that? Yeah. We're not afraid of a Denver crowd, bunch of stoners wearing Jimmy Buffett t shirts. Come on, we can win a game. <laughs> this is not like going to Madison Square Garden, for God's sake. We can beat a bunch of uh, hippies. Uh, uh, Anthony Edwards, 27 points. Jaden McDaniels, 21. And his defense was great. Mike Conley, obviously, he proved how valuable he yep. always has been and how much they missed him in the prior game. Uh, a bounce back game for Rudy Gobert, uh, right, uh, Michael Grady? Yeah, um, yeah, you know, heading into to last night, I really felt like um, Rudy was was getting a, a, a bad rap um, by folks nationally um, and and folks with Twitter fingers. I just I felt like Rudy Gobert played strong defense on the best basketball player in the world who was in the zone in Game Five. And for all the people that were coming at Rudy Gobert, how is he defense player, all of those things, um, these people weren't watching the game and were just jumping on the bandwagon of those who, who wanted to poke fun at Rudy Gobert because for whatever reason nationally, he's an easy target. And people are gullible and believe whatever Draymond Green says in front of a microphone. <laughs> uh, he played, he played Draymond tremendous, Green shut up. <laughs> tremendous um, defense, again, against – the MVP and the best player in the world who just looked possessed in game five. And so I don't, I, I look at it as, as Gobert playing. Um, uh, he, he definitely stepped up, but I don't think it was dissimilar from the basketball that we've seen Rudy Gobert play all season long. And Jokic missed shot, shots. Mm-hmm. And, and even great ball players have games where they miss shots. And they have a greater chance of missing it when you're playing great defense, which Rudy Gobert did, um, which Jaden McDaniels did. And I really felt like Jaden McDaniels just helped turn the game on its head. Like his aggression on the offensive end, his efficiency on the offensive end. Down 9-2, to two, Timberwolves forced to call a timeout. And then after a possession or so, um, you know, McDaniels missed a three got the ball back a few possessions later and with Jokic right in his face pulled up and hit a corner three to make it nine to five to start a 20-0 run Mm -hmm. um 
McDaniels could have passed up on that three. He had only made two three-pointers the entire series before that make. He could have passed up on that three because of lack of confidence. But again, with Jokic right in his face, he pulled up, hit the three. And I just felt like it made everybody exhale. Uh, they get a turnover, Edwards gets a dunk, and they get rolling from there. So I, I have to give McDaniels a ton of credit for um, for helping helping the team last night. And after the game, Anthony Edwards gave Jaden McDaniels a ton of credit as well. Uh, yeah. Carl had a solid game, Nas Reed. It, it just shows you that when everyone's clicking on this club and everyone's playing defense and playing position and being smart, they can do any damn thing. And, 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 and they have to prove it one more time against Denver and see if they can go think- from there. Yes, I think Frank. one of the numbers that I think one of the numbers that tells the story of the game is Jokic ended up with two assists last night. Mm-hmm. When you can, when you can stop Jokic from finding the open man, which he does so well, better than any big man in the league, and hold that guy to two assists, you're going to win a lot of those games or be in a lot of those games because he just does so many things well, uh, and it's not just the scoring that that makes him a, such a great player. So, Yeah, like we've talked about, I mean, he's got so many different facets to his game, scoring, rebounding, assist. If you right. can shut down one of those, then you've got a good chance to win. Yeah, no that doubt. Was, that was a riot last night. That was an absolute riot. And the crowd got their chicken sandwich. That uh, was cool. That was the best part. Yeah. That was a fun moment. <laughs> the crowd got the chicken sandwich out of the deal. And uh, 7 o'clock, uh, not 7 o'clock, but Game 7 will be Sunday. Uh, it has to do with the, the Eastern Conference uh, I think right. the deal is if the Knicks close the series out tonight, well, then the game will be around 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm, I'm not so sure about that because huh? I, I looked online just a little bit ago, and the Knicks game on Sunday is scheduled for is already scheduled for 2.30, but you're right. If they can close it out tonight, then the Wolves would slide into that slot at right. 2.30, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. Oh, my damn. That was just uh, one that I will remember for a long, long time. No defending NBA champion had ever lost in the playoffs by more than 36 points until the turd was laid out last night by the Nuggets. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Michael Grady, now uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. It it really sucks not being able to uh, hear and see you and Jim Pete beyond the first round. Um, but you're keeping busy. You're calling other games, WNBA games. Uh, tell us more about what you've been up to, Michael. Uh, well, I've been with the I've been with the team, you know, the uh, during this during this run, and I'll be on the flight to Denver a little bit later today. Uh, WNBA won't start until um, after this. What we hope will be a championship run for the Timberwolves. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be heading to New York, doing a little back and forth, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll be going from one championship run. Uh, to another. Uh, the Liberty went to the WNBA Finals a season ago, fell short to Las Vegas, and they'll hope to get back, but this time win it all and, and get their first championship in, in franchise history. So, uh, so, yeah, it'll be back, back to Brooklyn, but hopefully in uh, late June, early July. <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all Timberwolves all day. Right on. And, I mean, again, we miss you. We miss seeing you and Jim. You guys were absolutely, I mean, just outstanding yes. together. And, uh, wow, we really feel we really feel lucky around here to have you and, uh, and oh, Jim man. working together. Uh, we, feel like the, we feel like the lucky ones. And um, we, still, uh, we still sit together on the – he's still my seat partner on the, uh, the plane. So we're still talking and breaking down games and, and sharing our uh, uh, joy or frustration with officials or <laughs> – or uh, making or missing shots, whatever it may be. So that's still my guy. We can't wait to uh, get back on the mic together uh, next season. Does he does he allow you a little bit of room? I mean, he's a big guy. When you're sitting next to each other on an airplane, does he hog all the space because he's such a giant guy or what? Yeah. Well, th- well thank goodness this is a charter flight. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise... Yeah, it'd be a little rough. I'd have to be in a different row. But but no, he's <laughs> we have enough room, and um, and uh, no, we have a we have a great time. That's 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 uh, that's my guy. And he's he's as he's as passionate as anybody. And I have to imagine he was standing during the broadcast with the great Alan Horton, just like everybody else in that building. Amazing crowd last night at Target Center, and and the team. You know, again to their credit, they gave them something to cheer about. There really weren't very many runs in games three and four mm-hmm. uh, at home, um, but that 20-0 run really got the juices flowing, and, and there were a lot of people who didn't sit the entire game last night. 
Here's the bad news for you, Michael Grady. If the team keeps winning, we're going to keep bothering you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to get used to mornings, then. I got to get used to mornings. <laughs> 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 You know, we're night owls in this NBA life, but no, I I can't think of a better reason to wake up in the morning to talk about massive Timberwolves victories. Cool, man. Michael, uh, have a blast uh, uh, in Denver on uh, Sunday, and hopefully we see something truly great come out of that game. I I can't wait to see what happens. Anything can happen in a game seven. The the Denver may have home court, um, but they have pressure to perform in front of their home crowd after a 45-point beatdown. Meanwhile, the Timberwolves are led by a fearless 22-year-old who has been outstanding. I can't wait to see what happens. And as Josh played in our intro, he told the locker room attendant in Denver, we'll see you MFers back here for games. <laughs> he did. Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. We'll talk to you later. Take care, guys. Lead announcer for the Timberwolves, Michael Grady, there joining us on the program. I'm a fan, as you can tell. Really, honestly, uh, he and yeah. Jim Peterson are, yeah, I mean, great. it's such great stuff. Yep. Uh, also, before we can we, we we can go right into this, or, or what's the deal over there? Someone talk to me. Oh, we're calling him right now. Oh, okay. Oh, I doing? thought he was on hold. Yeah, he's not. We don't have enough phone lines for that. Oh. we got another uh, guest on the telephone. We're going to line up here in just a minute. But uh, so uh, Sunday's game seven, we'll find out the the time. But it sounds like it's going to be very reasonable, uh, depending oh, yeah. on that. It, it'll, it'll be reasonable. It'll probably be, it'll be if it's. Um, if if the Pacers win tonight and the Knicks Pacers game is at two thirty, I'm going to assume it's going to be after that. Wasn't that nice last seven night? Seven thirty, yeah. seven forty five. That was yeah. nice. Yeah, God, was that great. was a great basketball game. That was a great game. Just make shots, play some defense, bother the piss out of these guys. You could tell Jamal Murrah was aggravated from the get go. Like you that. saw the look on Jokic's face almost from the get go. Jokic was thinking, "Do I got to do everything around here?" You know what I mean? Because the teammates weren't making shots, you know what I mean. They were I, I, they, I were Jokic. they were doubling up on Jokic. They were doubling up on him, and no one else could help him out. What's that, Randy? I, I just laugh when I when I watch Jokic play because he looks exhausted all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, he His does. His face. He just looks like he's dead tired. I, I know he's not. I know he's in really good shape for a big guy, but man, he just looks tired all the time. At last night, he looked tired and frustrated. At the same time, and the Wolves, you know, give them credit. They this they played great last time. Speaking of that Eastern Conference series, did you guys hear about the fart? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> the rally, fart. the rally fart, oh. man. There's a rally fart that uh, might just uh, send the Knicks to the Eastern Conference Final Final. Here's what happened: uh, the New York Knicks got pumped in Game Four by Indiana, but came back and won Game Five. And according to a guy named Fred Katz of The Athletic, you guys always talk about this setup, The Athletic, uh, the Knicks locker room was kind of tense before Game 5, right? They got whooped in Game 4. But then, according to this Fred Katz, someone uh, unleashed, is how you say it, a, quote, epic fart in the locker room. Everyone had a good time with it. It loosened up the ball club, and they went out and curb stomped the Pacers in Game 5. I was in the locker room. I was talking to a bunch of guys. I'm not going to share one anecdote that showed me how loose they were because I'm not going to embarrass the guy, but there was an epic fart that loosened up the locker room a lot before the game, and I'm not going to say who it was because I'm not going to embarrass the guy. I'd want to take claim to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does your butt have that much power? I doubt it. <laughs> to rally an NBA team? Probably not. But <laughs> Dudes, it was a rally fart. Oh, not a Costco fart. No, no, no. <laughs> I've never heard a story like that before. Also, according to this report, the players also loosened up in the locker room before game five by laughing at a picture of Tom Thibodeau shirtless on a beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah that would do it. That would do it. All right, before we stop swinging from the Wolves jockstraps, we need to say hello to a guy that NBA fans everywhere have become familiar with during this Wolves playoff run. The dude with the bright green Wolves costume who's been going to all the games. You know who I'm talking about, Brad and Randy? Yes. I do. His name is Cottrell Macklin, uh, and he's on our telephone line right now. Hello, Cottrell Hey, hey. Hey, good morning. Cottrell. Hey, good morning. How are welcome. you guys? Yeah, we, Nice talking to you. We're doing good. Welcome yeah, to our show. Thanks for having me. 
Um, what has been going on with you? Uh, we spotted you. We spotted you at the Phoenix series, and everyone's like, "Who's this guy?" Uh, and, and and we learn that you're this massive Wolves fan from Memphis. My first question would be, "Do you know Jerry Lawler, and how is he doing?" <laughs> Yeah, good question. Yeah, so I kind of – that's a funny question. It's the first time I've been asked that. But, yeah, I mean, I kind of go back with Jerry, surprisingly or not. Like, my um, father's Corey Macklin that used to do the Memphis wrestling here. So, they have really? pretty tight ties to Jerry Lawler, actually, surprisingly. Um, so, but, yeah, and I, and I think he's doing pretty good. Last that I heard, though, he was having some troubles, I believe, down in Florida, and that was the last that I've heard, and I haven't spoken with him since, so <laughs> – I'm joking around here, and you actually have. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You actually have a. Your, your father was involved in that. That's fascinating. So yeah, he uh, ran Memphis Wrestling. Yeah, unbelievable. Dang. Unbelievable. Uh, we, we spotted you during the Phoenix series with the outfit and everything. Uh, tell us the, your origin story. How did it? How did it come that you are this massive Timberwolves fan and go into road games? Well, by the way, are you in town right now? Did you go to last night's game? No, I didn't go to last night's game. I washed it from my couch and, uh, <laughs> you know, ordered some wings, and the wife just kind of spiffed it up. We turned some lights on. It was all good, Doug. It was super smiles from the jump, so that was all good. So you were having um, a riot last night at the house with the, with the wife? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, she let me turn up the audio. Oh, my goodness, trophy wife for sure. <laughs> I <won seven. laughs> so it was good. It was fun, but no, I'm not in town. It was amazing coming there, too. Oh, my goodness. That was a memorable trip. I love that town um, and love the people there. But, no, the, the game was amazing. Watched it from home. Not in town currently. Okay, but you, how did you become this Timberwolves fan and, and next thing you know you're yeah. traveling with the outfit and everything? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it goes back to, like, early 2000s, Wally Zerbiak area. You know, I, I love the fact that he was a sharpshooter. And then, obviously, everyone knows KG. Um, and, and, and the enthusiasm he brought. So I think kind of a mix in between those guys, you get Ant-Man, um, you know, the crazy enthusiasm. He can pull up three on a fast break. He's super exciting to watch, big-time personality. Um, and outside of that, you just have a stacked team like Nas Reed, Nikhil Alexander. Mike Conley used to play for the Memphis Grizzlies, so he's a big-time legend here, and I followed him when he was here. Um, you know, so it just goes on and on. But now, you know, I kind of followed those guys even through AAU in high school, and I just followed them all the way to the league. And, you know, it just so happened that they were wearing that Timberwolves green and, and blue. So, yeah. I mean, and, and uh, you, you noted, I read in an article, that uh, you, yeah. be, you became a Wally Zerbiak fan because he was a sharp shooter, a sharp shooter and so were you back in the day. So you're a big <laughs> – you played high school, college basketball, something like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I played both high school and college, you know, and then I kind of got that, um, that that bulb went off after my freshman year in college of like, all right, what am I going to do? What's going <laughs> to – there's so many ballers out there. They're so good. I had to find the next thing. But, yeah, I mean, I, I set records like high school, you know, as a three-point shooter. I Dude. still hold the high school record um, there in Arlington. And then, you know, college, I, I played that first year, and after that kind of stopped. But he would, that was the really the big inspiration. Um, even, like, on the games, I would play with Wally Zerbiak. And people <laughs> like, why are you playing with Wally Zerbiak? <laughs> I'm like, he's, he's the best. So, you know, I think that's where that came from, and it just grew from there. I didn't expect this phone call to go in this direction. I think a lot of folks just thought, here's a guy who had too many beers before a Wolves game. But we find out here that, uh, that Cottrell Macklin uh, has family ties to uh, Memphis wrestling and is a record-setting college uh, and high school basketball player. <laughs> That's a different term for sure. I, I mean, no one's asked that question, so you guys are amazing. You're on the right track. But, um, yeah, it definitely goes back. You know, I was... I was in those arenas and the, you know, the, I'm not sure if you guys, how familiar you are with wrestling as well, but the Mid South Coliseum holds a ton of history when it comes to wrestling. And, you know, my, my father ran the Memphis Wrestling. We, they were on broadcast all the way from in the U.S. to Hawaii. Um, you know, so yeah, that was a ton of fun growing up watching that. Um, big time sports fan ever since I was a kid, kind of following that and then. Um, you know, obviously got a couple ties to Jerry Lawler and 
surprisingly, um, you know, Jimmy Hart, the guy who was a big time personality, he used to stay in our house when they, they would come to town. But yeah, what the hell? Will you be a really member fun. of our morning show? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I know you. Know, we we're big wrestling dorks around here. Does that does that mean maybe you? How old of a guy are you, uh, Cottrell? I just turned thirty one. Oh, you're a young guy. I was going to ask if uh, you know maybe you were around during the Andy Kaufman days or anything like that. Yeah, that name rings a bell, man. Well, I mean, he and Jerry. Okay, for Christ's sake, we were supposed to talk about the Timberwolves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not the first time this show has transitioned no. to wrestling out of nowhere. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, I'm a massive Wolves fan my whole life. It's been so much fun to see you at the games on television. I haven't been to a game in person yet where I've, I've spotted you. Are you going to Denver for Game 7? Actually, I was contemplating that last night, and I think I'm going to go ahead and make that a deal. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> I don't awesome. know if there's a way that I could turn that down. So, oh, you know, I, I think sorry. I'm going to I want to hop on a plane. I've been um, actually up early this morning looking at different flights, and I've been having calls, surprisingly, text messages. People are like, well, we want to see you there. Just start a GoFundMe or something. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. There's so many people that will support it. So, you know, that's what I'm working on. But I think ultimately – Yes, I'm going to end up going to Game 7. we got to have some type of home atmosphere there. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to schedule myself as being that person that's going to bring that enthusiasm. The wife's cool with it? Yep, she's cool with it. That's why I was like, all right, do this. So I asked her, you know, I'm like, honey, you know, hey, you know, this has been completely fun. I love being home, but I'm just wondering, could I possibly go to Game (laughs) 7? And she's like, "Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. You know, we're we're just – we're not doing much this weekend. Daughter just ended school. I was like, yes, let's do it. You know, on the inside. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'll be, I'll just, I'll be back Monday. So, You're no the big- man. <laughs> Cottrell, a living legend is what you are. Cottrell <laughs> Macklin. I'll tell you what. I bet if you just streamed your living room, people would tune in. Just <laughs> alternate broadcast. Definitely. With the claw, yeah. the, the wolf's claw in the green outfit and the wolf's head. Uh, it, it's been a blast. We're going to need you there on oh, Sunday, yeah. Cottrell, so make those plans. We really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, you've been great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Cottrell. My damn, I didn't I didn't see any of that coming. I, he's a, His dad ran Mid-South Wrestling, Wapple? Dude, that's insane. There's there's textures. There's a few people who lived in the area text and it says dad was awesome. They, they're very familiar with his dad. And that he was great. It's funny that no all way. the articles that I read about this guy, because when I read, oh, I guess I shouldn't say all the, I read a couple articles There's on this guy. And they, none of the articles mentioned that. No, they he, kept it just about the Wolves. We were the only program smart enough to ask him about wrestling. Mm-hmm. He's from Memphis. Of course he's into wrestling. Well, if the Wolves make it past Game 7, we should have him back on. I was about to say you better keep his number in case they win. Absolutely. Cottrell, I'll tell you what. We could just have a wrestling segment and get him back on. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could find yeah. excuses to get him yeah. on. Maybe, cool get him, maybe put him in a match up here in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, if we, once we get WrestleMania, maybe we can raise a couple of bucks, get him up here. That'd be awesome. He could dress up in the character, and we could maybe pay Arya Davari to beat the living hell out of him. It'd be a riot. All right. Well, that, that was fun. He's great. He is a nice guy. I'm happy we... All right, Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. Um, uh, I got this text message earlier. I'm sure you guys want to cut loose on this. Uh, the text message says, does Nick know that Scotty Scheffler, the number one golfer in the world, was detained, arrested, and brought to jail on his way to golf in round two of this tournament, a tournament that he leads? <laughs> this is insane. What is this story? Go ahead, the well, both he of you. Doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't lead. Well, who cares about that? What is, what is this story about? It, Scotty Scheffler got arrested. Apparently, yes. Apparently, this morning he was driving to Valhalla, and in Louisville, and there was a there was an accident in front of the golf uh, venue where a, a pedestrian was killed. Oh no! And so policemen, so police were there blocking this off as they're, you know, going over the scene. Right. And he apparently tried to get around all of that to get to the golf course and drove up on the median or on the side or somewhere. And the cops went ape, ape on him yeah. and stopped him. They didn't care who he was. They, in fact, I'm, I'm sure they probably didn't even know who he was when right. they stopped him. Uh-huh. But they arrested him. Uh, he was put in the back of a squad car and he was driven away. So Good. I don't know. I don't know what his status is for round two. It's I got, I got you, good. Randy. Um, so he was okay. he was booked 
for uh, second degree assault, criminal mischief, reckless driving, disregarding signals from officers. Um, but he has been released, and ESPN Plus said that he will make his tea time, and he's on his way to the course. If not, they're already. So what, assault? So okay. what, he went after somebody physically? Well, they claim that, I, I guess, I don't know what this mean means, but the police officer attached himself to his car. I, I don't yeah, know what that means. Yeah, he tried to drive. Yeah. So, yeah, and then he drove happened. away. He and, pulled a Randy Maughan. He tried to drive away while a cop was hanging onto the hood? The cop was trying to stop him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who does this puke bag think he is? <laughs> well, they did. Um, I just saw a picture on Twitter of, like, the, the traffic people that are out there, like just the, the ordinary people versus the cops. And they're wearing like the same exact jacket, I guess, with like a hood up. And it's you can't really tell that it's a cop, especially if it's dark out. So maybe he didn't think it was a police officer. Well, you still should stop. If yeah, you know, right. I'm not, out. I'm not really sure. Who is this entitled prick? <laughs> they already got his mug shot online. Yeah. 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 They it's, got him in orange on jumpsuit a, and everything. Yeah. It's on 93x.com, too. If you, guys if, if you know anything about this guy, though, in his past, this is completely, yeah, completely out guy. of character. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not something you would yes. expect out of him. So I want to hear the whole story. Sounds like an entitled prick to me. Uh. <laughs> Uh, ringing your mom's doorbell, Jesus, said he just read that um, the cop didn't put Scotty in his DraftKings lineup, so that's why they are. Oh, <laughs> oh, for pizza. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. Someone got killed on the roadside, but I'm Scotty Scheffler. I got to get around this? No. Sit there and wait, douche. I'm not sure he knew that somebody got killed on the road when he well, was he, trying I'm to sure, go around. He probably didn't know that. I'm yes. sure he was informed of it at one point or another, wouldn't you Afterwards, think? maybe. Well, he went around a roadblock. Yeah. yeah. I'm not accusing the fact he went around a roadblock, but I'm sure he didn't know at the right. time that, that somebody had died. You guys are always going to defend these asshat golfers <laughs> at all turns. That's what you're going to do. He's not that. That's not what he is. That's He's not, not what that he is at all. Here's what this... He uh, is not that kind of guy. Well, he is now. Uh, here's what it says. Uh, what is this? Uh, Twitter? Uh, I don't know what this means. You guys tell me. Scotty Scheffler getting cuffed before the PGA Championship is one step away from shooting Derek Jeter in the tunnel before the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of a movie. Uh, Some would argue that's the only way that uh, the rest of the field has a chance. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you've seen all the, the memes saying, like, yeah. uh, I think the other golfers paid off these cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a lot of drama that is, I'll tell you. Yeah. <sighs> terrible someone got killed out there huh christ almighty yeah well uh gentlemen it was another miserable series with an f in new york yankees oh. twins got shut smooth out again at target field yesterday she was five nothing hell the only run the store the uh this is how a grown person would say it the only run scored for the twins the entire series was a lead off first inning dong in game one 26 scored, innings yeah consecutive shutout at this point it sucks. By the way, uh, Cottrell um, Macklin did not queef uh, while we were on the air. <laughs> uh, Waffle was dying over here. Oh, oh, Waffle's going to pass out. Well, it was so funny because that was accidental that Josh let slip out. Yep. And then it was so funny because maybe like five seconds after. Just like a real one. It accidentally yeah, it, slipped yeah, out. By yeah. age. No, and then five seconds after, Nick almost said shark. On the air. I did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't and catch that. that. That's when I absolutely lost it. <laughs> I have no memory of almost saying shart, but we, yeah, we, we, we so, need to. I, I can't control the volume over here, right? I used to have a whole board, and I can't. This, the system sucks. And so all I did is I moved a mouse out of the way. And for whatever reason, it triggered the fart sound effect <laughs> at an inopportune time. So, yeah, all of us off here were dying. I'm thinking, God, I hope people didn't hear that. But, of course, everyone's texting in saying, who farted in the middle of that interview? Yeah. <laughs> we, need, we needed to acknowledge that before we moved on. It was Cottrell Macklin did not come on our radio show to fart. <laughs> No, that was. Uh, can you play that sound again? It was kind of a cute sound. Oh yeah, just give, give me a second. I, it's like just a, a little. I one. usually can only play it uh, by accident. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> just a little squeaker. Yesterday, the Yankees starter, some kid named uh, Schmidt uh, Bomb or Schmidt Worthy. What the hell was his name? Clark Schmidt. Clark Schmidt. He allowed just three hits in eight innings. Struck out eight. Didn't walk anybody. 
Yankees jumped he's on really Joe good. Ryan having, right away. He's having an All Star year. I mean, he's he's picked up where Garrett Cole uh, would likely would have been in that rotation. So. And the good news is, even when well. Yankees are not having All Star years, they usually get voted into the All Star game. So uh, at least this guy okay. might be legitimate. I, I took a peek at the uh, division today. It's kind of fun. This division is better than advertised. The Tigers are now almost five hundred too. So. Pretty soon you're going to have four of the five teams in the division over 500. It's going to be a hell of a deal. Yeah. Right and the White Sox actually are playing better than yeah. you know when they started. Their pitching is starting to come around with that Eric Fetty, who's uh, been really good, and, and Garrett Crochet. So, you know, not that they're going to be a division contender, but at least they're being competitive, and that's what you want to see. Unless they play the Twins, and then they're not competitive. But the White Sox are the White Sox are playing better than garbage right now. So uh, I saw on I, saw, I was just going to say I saw on Twitter uh, Aaron Gleeman put out a stat about the Twins and the Yankees. Since 2002, the Twins have a record of 44 and 120 against the Yankees. Yeah, a, a winning percentage of 268. Yeah, there's That's, been a lot of that and, kind and of information against, popping up during this and series, against, and I've decided to ignore it. And against everybody else, a, a, a percentage of 514. Yeah. So the yeah. Twins have struggled in the last 22 years to beat the Yankees. Anytime As the, we all know. During any Twins-Yankees series, someone pops up those, those numbers from the last 20 years, and I just can't look at them anymore. I just can't. It just goes on. Like uh, Ice uh, Cube said in the season. movie, uh, what the movie was called, Boys in the Hood. Like Ice Cube said in the movie, Boys in the Hood. It just goes on and on, you know. So now the uh, fellas are on the road this weekend to play the Guardians in Cleveland, 6 o'clock tonight. Ooh, yeah. good series. Yeah. They're in first place, the Guardians. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a guy in the stands at the Twins game yesterday eating a whole summer sausage. <laughs> that guy was awesome. <laughs> what was this dude doing? <laughs> this is up he on 93 ate the sausage? No, he didn't eat the sausage, Not Randy the Shaver. the sausage. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, he did not eat the rally sausage. He had his own summer sausage. And he uh, had it uh, in his right hand, and he was just taking giant bites of it. Uh, someone or another took a picture of the guy, and they put it up there on Twitter. Uh, the gimmick is alive and well. Maybe now after this series we can discard that sausage, maybe. Well, why do you want to discard yeah. it? Well, because they scored one run in three games. It's the, the magic's gone. It's long season, Brad. Oh. That has nothing to do with the rally sausage. Didn't you hear the numbers Randy just said? You could have a dozen Randy, so- uh, Randy sausages. Oh, I'll buy one of those. <laughs> I don't think we want one of those. They're very limp. You could have a dozen <laughs> rally sausages, and the Twins are still never going to beat the Yankees. Don't, don't, don't kill the rally sausage, Brad Ryder, please. I always blaming the sausage, Brad. Yeah. The Twins should have a summer sausage giveaway night. I'm sure it's probably in the works. Uh, Simeon Woods Richardson starts the series tonight against Tristan McKenzie for the Guardians. Oh, oh, it was on this date uh, in 1998 when David Wells threw that hungover no-hitter against the Twins. Wearing Babe Ruth's old cap. Yeah. David Wells, I remember that game very vividly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Perfect game, I should say, actually. Perfect game, not just a no-hitter. Yeah, that was a miserable, miserable day. Uh, it, was, it was a Sunday, I'm pretty sure. 20, uh, how many years ago? Uh, 1998, whatever, how many years ago was that? I, I can't tell you. But And the great story was that David Wells, he claims he was hungover. I, I think it's more still drunk. Mm-hmm. Well, he claims he was at, and not claims, it was fact, people saw him there at the Saturday Night Live after party mm-hmm. until like 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. When you drink till 6 a.m. and you wake up at 9.30, you're not hungover. You're still drunk. Um, so that <laughs> yeah. makes it even more impressive uh, what David Wells did. Uh, legendary story. In case you're a young person, you don't know it. Look it up. There, you, you can find stories on the Internet about David Wells, perfect game against the Twins while drunk. Uh, Stanley Cup action. Stanley Cup. Well, the New York Rangers are going to the conference final, 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 final. They eliminated Carolina last night. Vancouver beat Ed Mental by a goal. Vancouver leads that series three games to two in the best of seven. I imagine most hockey fans would like to see Edmonton advance because then you got the Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl show. Um, but Vancouver's got the upper hand. 
right now. Tonight, Game 6, Boston at Florida, or Boston and Florida. I'm not sure where they're playing. Game 6, Parisi Suter. Mm. They, they're they playing at Parisi. Yep. And then finally, finally, a modern-day NHL player that's not afraid to tell the truth. I've never been a fan of this guy, Brad Marchand of the Boston Bruins. I've never been a fan of the guy. But I haven't really followed the, the Florida-Boston series, but apparently a couple games ago, a, a kid by the name of Sam Bennett playing for Florida, he kind of punched Marshawn in the mouth. Uh, he turned a check into a punch in the mouth. I want to be clear about this. It's not like he gave a, a tr- cliche punch. He was, he was checking Marshawn, and at the same time, he kind of punched him in the yap. And it, uh, it turned Marshawn's brains uh, upside down, and he, he had to miss a game or two, right? So Marshawn says, yes, Bennett got away with one with that hit, but Marshawn also said opponents looking to injure each other is just part of playoff hockey. He was cool with it. Marshawn said, people don't want to say it, but part of the playoffs is trying to hurt every player on the other team. The more guys you take out, the more advantage your team has. It's just so refreshing to hear a modern NHL player talk about that kind of thing. In the old days, it was common knowledge. The NHL doesn't really want to hear players say things like this anymore, uh, but Marshawn went ahead and say it, uh, said it, and that's the old-school NHL mentality that I miss so much in today's game. He said, every time you step on the ice, someone's trying to hurt someone. That's just how the playoffs go. That's why you rarely see teams that are small and skilled go far, because they get hurt. Yes, he got away with a shot, but I'm not going to complain. Shh, happens. That's part of playoff hockey. I've been on the other side of a lot of plays like that, and yes, he has. This makes me think about the old days, that's all. You know how nostalgic I can get, Josh? You like to get nostalgic. <sighs> when talking about the Wolves and Nuggets yesterday, didn't I just say yesterday? Or maybe it was two days ago. You know, is it time for the Wolves to take out one of Denver's top players? And I said, I told you the truth. Canada doesn't win the 72 series unless Bobby Clark breaks that Russian guy's ankle, and Bobby Clark hasn't had to buy a beer in Canada since 1972. I've completely lost every one of you, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can, but, but, but you can relate to the idea of, you know, hurting your opponent gives you an advantage. You can relate to that. I still lost you. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. There you go. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, what do you guys got going on this weekend? I got quite a bit Uh, going on this weekend. We got commencement tomorrow at the school I work at. Got a couple of last softball games to coach. And then on Sunday, I'll be watching the Wolves. Commencement, huh? Do you have to speak? No, but I got to put on one of those gowns. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's cool. Oh, uh, natural underneath. Yep. Well, uh, of course. Yeah. Oh, full Scottish. <laughs> no other way, Dan. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy schmancy. What about yeah. you, Randy Shaver? Uh, just a quiet weekend and uh, hanging with the grandkids tomorrow, and then watching the wolves on Sunday. Well, that Good sounds, sounds all right. perfect. I hope this is a really close game. Like I kind of alluded to, I hope we get one of those. Like tie games last minute. Oh hell sort no! Of thing. I want them to win by well, even, even worse than they did last night. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You you know both teams are going to bring their best on Sunday. It's going to be a war. It'll be fun. It's going to yeah. be a rock fight. It probably will be a close game, but I'm hoping for a, just a disaster for the Denver Nuggets. Just an absolute disaster. I hope the fans are just vomiting in the aisles <laughs> <laughs> because of the the brutal brutal beating that the Wolves delivered to them. I hope the Wolves can be dicks. You know that. That's my theme. Let's be dicks. So, uh, But we're all looking forward to it. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll talk to you on Monday. All right. See ya. Goodbye. We'll be right back on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Half-Assed Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future. And we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. 
Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. Welcome to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Guest star Sarah Carter as Alicia Baker. Although I didn't really work with her a lot. But Tom did, and they had some real big smoochy scenes. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Could there be any more sex? What was a three-page makeout scene that just kept going? Good Lord. We get it. They have chemistry. Jump in now or catch up on any of the past seasons of Talkville on YouTube or wherever you listen. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, it's our final final. Uh, thank you so much for listening. 831. Uh, you know, if I hadn't made a trip to the bathroom right there, I'd be dead right now. <laughs> yeah, you were struggling. Yeah, that yeah. look good. Dude, you scurried out of here, too. <laughs> I went to the bathroom during that P.O.D. song. You know how we are around here, Josh. P.O.D. We're always playing the best alternative rock. <laughs> That's an old comedy bit. Who did that joke? We can never come up with the guy's yeah, name. I, I know the bit, but I forget. It's a great morning radio show joke. I can ne- Cross. Oh, David Cross. David Cross. Yeah, that's right. David Cross. Uh, yeah, I walked by when I think you released the last line of defense. <laughs> I, oh, was, yeah, you did. Yeah, I was yeah. right there, right there in oh, the front poor. lines. Yes, uh, he was He was there. <laughs> oh, no. Poor Josh. He didn't need that. <laughs> oh, no. We're good enough friends. I was fine with it. All right. Uh... Who does this Ashley gal uh, think she is? Is Ashley here today? Yeah, I'm here. She's our co-worker. Assigning us a test. Sorry. Ashley found a test and made us all take it. She was really uh, adamant about this. Is this test up on our website so other folks can take it if they want to? Yes, it is. I might have to boost it to the top. Go ahead. Do your boosting. We, uh, We all took a narcissism test. A narcissism test. Big word, isn't it? Yeah. I remember job. We, we talked a little wrestling earlier on the program. I remember when Lex Luger suddenly was the narcissist. Oh, yeah. Lex Luger. And I think I was I was probably way too old. Um, but why does it matter anymore to admit it? I had no idea what the word was, and I was totally confused by the character. And I probably was 17 years old. Narcissism, <laughs> narcissist, big word. It just means you're kind of a you're kind of in love with yourself. You're a cocky prick, right? Narcissism. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you think about yourself first and foremost, and then maybe other people. Let me explain a little bit of this to you uh, and to our listening audience. Of course, it says here in our selfie obsessed and self posting culture, we've all likely heard the word narcissism thrown around. Oftentimes, it's used to describe someone who seems overly vain or full of themselves. But is that really what narcissism means? They say here, more accurately, narcissism is one of 10 personality disorders. It's defined as an inflated sense of self. If you've had moments of narcissism, you're not alone. Each person, each and every damn last one of us, they say, is narcissistic in some way. We all have moments. Whether that's believing you're the best person for a job or the best looking person in the room, we can all recognize areas where we feel unique and special. But if the need to feel special and important becomes excessive, excessive, you might be living with symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. It can affect how you think, how you feel, how you behave. Definitely know plenty of those, and I think... um... You know, it doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad person, but just don't realize that other people exist. In every situation, they, it's about them in some way, and I don't think they mean to be that way. They're just in their own world a little bit. I think some mean to be, some aren't aware of it, it but all of what you said is, uh, I'll go along with Cubby, no question. It can F up your day-to-day activities. You're, you know, you're the prick at work that can't get over himself. Maybe eventually they can you. Your, your group of friends can't stand you anymore because all you're talking about is how great me, 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 I do this and I do. People with narcissistic personality disorder. Here are some of the symptoms. Grandiosity, grandiosity, maybe is how you say that. And self-importance. 
a sense of specialness and uniqueness, fantasies of perfection and superiority, need for praise, a sense of entitlement, lack of uh, lack of empathy, arrogance. So, uh, whoever these people are, what was what was the website where you found this, Ashley? This test. I should have written it down, and I did not. It's called Psych Central. Psych Central. Were you were you on there? Is this a personal thing? You were you looked it up to find out if you're nuts or something? <laughs> no, um, it's going. It was going around on Twitter again. Ah, uh, friggin' Twitter. Yeah, that's that's where you find all these kind of tests. So, what was the name of the joint again? Psych Central. Psych Central put together a narcissistic personality test. Well, I missed the term psych. Uh, we used to use that. Oh, so that was like, a fun one. Man, that is a cool bike. Where did you get that bicycle? That's awesome. And the person's like, oh, wow, thank you. Psych, as in, I didn't like that at all. And then yeah. you tell them their bicycle really yeah, sucks. Yeah, that's a terrible bicycle. Let's psych, your back. bicycle is garbage. If you take this test, there are 40 statements, and for each statement, you choose the one that best matches you. Even if it's not a perfect fit, 40 statements you choose one that best. Here are some examples. Which statement best matches you? Feel free to chime in. Modesty doesn't become me. Or, I am essentially a modest person. I would do anything on a dare. Or, I tend to be a fairly cautious person. Yeah, this one I thought is is probably why I got the the answer that I did. Because, like, I, w- I would do anything on a dare. <laughs> You would. Just about anything, yeah. I dare you right now to walk into Derek's office and cut a turd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's out He's out today. So. Yeah. Oh, look at oh, oh well just... then, no, 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 not Derek's office. No, no, do that because no. it'll yeah. fester and oh, oh, yeah. oh, darn. His door's locked. Shoot. Sorry, well, you guys. Some... You know where the key is? Bar saw <laughs> Jesus said he doesn't need a test to know he's the best narcissist around. Oh. <laughs> some more of the statements to give you an idea. And you choose one. Compliments embarrass me, or hell, I know I'm that damn good. I prefer to blend in with the crowd, or I like to be the center of attention. I'm no better or worse than most people, or I think I'm a special person. My body is nothing special, or I like to look at my body. (laughs) You get the gist, right? So we all took this test. We all took this damn test. I like this one. I always know what I'm doing, or sometimes I'm not sure what I'm doing. (laughs) We all took this test. It went on and on. It's easy. It's quick. And I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, dump my results on you. 40 different statements. Uh, What did they tell me? I I was a little confused by how it all plays out. Uh, But this is what I believe the narcissistic personality quiz told me about how I answered. Um... I scored high for feelings of superiority, and I scored high for feelings of vanity. That's what I took away from my quiz results. Hmm. Was I doing it right? Does that match up with what you folks received? I only got one result. Oh, oh, okay. Tell us about yours, John. I said no narcissistic uh, traits. That whatever. doesn't shock me. Yeah. No, that, that's yeah. all it told you. But was it was, yeah, it was a range because they had like, you know, a range of numbers. So zero to 10 means no narcissist. And I answered it as best I could. Yeah. There was oh, yeah. one that wasn't on there because I, I have caught myself doing this before. You know, I, as soon as I realize I try and change, but uh, let's say there's some new information or something comes up. I'll, I immediately think how it affects me and not realize, oh, you know, there's other people involved here as well. Okay. You know, right? Kind of like, that, that kind of sinks in sometimes. I think it's kind of natural. Again, if you're, you're kind of natural. See, I, I like that. <laughs> the results were kind of confusing to me, but if you're, if you're, like, say, at your office or whatever, taking this test right now, um, the results are if you score between 0 and 11, you have no narcissism. That, that's uh, where I was. Narcissism. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't have that solid number in front of me. Uh, yeah, so, it, it was just like you're in this range, yes. but it yeah. never gave you a number. Just oh. a range. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you're between 12 and 15, you have mild narcissism. 16 to 18, moderate narcissism. 20 plus, you're a total narcissist. But I, d- I never got that number. It just told me that I scored high for superiority. I guess I think I'm better than people, uh, than most people. And uh, I scored high for vanity. I think I'm pretty damn good looking. 
More anxiety than hair, Jesus said. What's the opposite of being a narcissist? Because I'm the best at that. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else have any interesting results? Uh, I got, I got uh, mild narcissism. Which... How, do you, how do you know that? My, where, where are you getting that score from? Um, that's just what it said at the end. It, it, it lets you know if you're either... Um, no narcissism, mild, moderate, or if you're like oh. a complete. Nick, it, See, mine you didn't must have do been that. in the no, no narcissism. Nick. <laughs> he just said he was in the narcissism. I yeah. never got that that solid score. Like Ashley oh. is saying, it told her you are a. It told you Ashley you are a mild narcissist. Yeah. They never so gave was, me that. I think it's tough to see because it took me a second too. I thought, well, it didn't give me any results. Yeah. There's a chart, and then it's highlighted yeah. where you fit. Oh, so I bet you just missed it. It's ball very sacks. It's very subtle. It's, yeah. Ah, for Christ's sake. It, it took me a couple of seconds. I always need someone to sit next to me during things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a mild narc. Did it did it tell you what you scored high in? Vanity, um, um superior like 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 I, what I was telling you. Vanity, superiority didn't tell you that? No, it didn't. Um but I I could even when I was answering the questions, I was like, there's no way it's gonna say no narcissism. Well, of course not. I mean because, like, I mean, for example, one of them, like, uh, one of the questions, I, it's either I can usually talk my way out of anything or I try to accept the consequences of my behavior. I think about, like, everything I've done in my life, like, with my parents. Like, yeah, I, I can usually talk my way out of anything. <laughs> well, you try to talk your way out of things around here and it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, but Josh is the only guy I would ever imagine would score zero on a narcissism. Well, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, zero to 11, right? I don't, yeah. I don't know where I was. Yeah, they don't give you the range, but they had me in the mild narcissism 12 to 15 range. I'd put you higher. Like a lot higher, wouldn't you guys? You I think, would say he's a total you narcissist. Think Dana's a yeah. narcissist? <laughs> I think just like better than Dana at Mario Kart Jesus said. Um, he claims that Aaron Rodgers, his score actually crashed the website. Maybe that's the issue you were having, Nick. I think Dana's oh, in that Jesus. range. Maybe I can take the test again real quick. Yeah, it me... doesn't take very I mean, it's a lot of questions, but it doesn't take very long. Because uh, I, I missed uh, the direct result. And, and Dana can't be a narcissist. No one who uh, on purpose wears jean shorts cares for themselves at all. <laughs> Wapa, what did they tell you about your narcissism level? So did I got no, a... no narcissism. It says I scored high in self sufficiency and also exploitiveness. You can take care of yourself and exploitiveness. Exploitativeness. Exploitativeness. Yes. I don't know what that means. Like, uh, apparently you I like exploit to show off? people. Oh, you ex- no, you don't exploit. I know, that's what I thought was weird. It, um, suggesting ex- you don't mind exploiting others in order to meet your own goals. And I was like, oh. I, that does not sound like me at all. Well, I don't know. You're kind of hanging from me in Cubby's coattails. Isn't that exploitative? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I didn't think of that one. Swinging from our jock. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, folks, go ahead if you have some time. Take this test. You can find it on 93x.com. It's kind of fun, and maybe you learn something about yourself. I mean, I know I'm a cocky prick. But maybe I'll take it again so I can get that solid answer that the rest of you did. A little bit of cockiness is, is good, though. Yeah, there's a difference between confident and being a jerk, I think. Should I, uh, let's take a break. I'm going to take this test, and uh, maybe I can give you some more solid answer. Not that you, you, you're dying to hear this kind of stuff, but I feel like I screwed up and I want to make good. We'll be back in a few minutes on the Half Fast Morning Show. Just be mindful, move out of the way, and just move on. The 93X Half Fast Morning Show. All right, so we've been talking about this narcissism test. Ashley found it online. It's up on 93x.com if you want to find out if you're totally head over heels in love with yourself. It's a narcissism test. They give you a bunch of choices like, uh, I, I'm very shy, or I like to be the center of attention. I don't like to show my body. I dig being naked in front of <laughs> It just kind of, you, you, you click away on this uh, narcissism test. I, I mentioned that I, I couldn't understand my results the first time I took the test. I, I know that I scored high in this category, but I couldn't get a final number. Um, the way it plays out, if you score 0 to 11, you have no narcissism. That's how uh, Josh uh, finished his test. My, yeah, that's what No my narcissism, is. right? That's what it says, yeah. Who was a mild narcissist? I was. Ashley was a mild narcissist. Uh, that's if you score 12 to 15. Who else? I was also a mild narcissist. Dana, mild narcissist. Wapple? I was no narcissist. No narcissism. So I took the test again. I answered the same way I did when I took it yesterday. 
Uh, Josh had to come over and help me, uh, and I finally, he showed me how to see my final score, and when we finally got it all figured out, uh, the result was, I am a total narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had to scroll down a while because you go, no narcissism, mild narcissism, moderate narcissism, and then you're a total narcissist. <laughs> I guess I dig myself uh, to a level that uh, is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. I scored high in superiority, exhibitionism, uh, exploitativeness, and vanity. Well, good for you, Nick. I win again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but some of the stuff on the test, you know, I, some of the stuff, you know, I'm not totally, where was what, like, here's one I think you mentioned, Ashley. Yeah. Which statement best matches you? I would do almost anything on a dare, or I tend to be a fairly cautious person. I tend to be a cautious person. I'm, I've never was the guy that was the first to jump off the roof into the pool. So, I mean... I'm not that bad yet. <laughs> you know, I'm not the guy that's going, hey, look at me. I, I don't know. That's not me yet. But I guess, according to the test, I am a total narcissist. Uh, just to be clear, um, a couple people have texted in and say, said, hey, you know, you should let people know you have to pay for that. You don't. You, you must have clicked on something else. Yeah, they have a bunch of ads and other tests and things. Yeah, be careful. On, so, go, Ashley, do you have, is there instructions or just a link on there? Um, it's just a link, but I can I can put down some instructions telling because yeah you have to scroll down, um, like ah geez, yeah, like I got pa past the pain part. Okay, yeah, so it's it is free. The one we took is free. We we wouldn't tell you to pay for or something like this. Nah, uh -uh. no, absolutely not. We'd let you know. So okay, it's good to know. Thank you for letting us know there was. One. I didn't even. I must have missed that and just went to the free one. But you didn't mean not to, Jesus. Texted in to say the fact that you retook the test and nobody asked you, you but you believe that everyone needs to know your score says that you're a narcissist. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. That did cross my mind. <laughs> Does anyone have a friend by the name of Kyle that's leaving town this weekend to the gathering of the Kyles? Oh, Ooh, no. I, got a, I got a buddy named Kyle. I do, too. Uh, but I do, don't know that he's going to go to that gathering. Tomorrow is uh, the gathering of the Kyles. In a city called Kyle, Texas. They're making another attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the largest same-name gathering ever. We've heard of this before, haven't we? Yeah, I think that's kind of funny when they do that You stuff. guys like this gimmick. Yeah. Isn't there a Josh one, I think, in Kansas or something? Josh fights. Yeah, Josh fights. Yeah, I knew there was some type of combat <laughs> involved. Yeah. yeah. Do they really fight? Yeah, well, they like it's with like Nerf American Gladiator Nerf, uh, type. Of. The pool noodles is what yeah, I saw. Yeah, yep. The Josh fighters. Josh fights fight each other with yeah, until there's one Josh remaining. <laughs> so Kyle, Texas, last time around, they had 1,490 people named Kyle show up at the event last year. This year it's tomorrow. It's all part of the Kyle Fair. And they're hoping to break this record. The current record for the largest same-name gathering, first name only, was set July of 20 ad 17 when 2,325 people named Ivan attended an Ivan Fest in, uh, it says here, Bosnia and Herzegovina, wherever the hell that is. So the Kyles are looking to break that record. They had 1,400-some-odd people last time. The record is 2,300 some odd people. The Kyle, uh, no, pardon me. The city of Austin, Texas has hosted another event like this. They had the Ryan Rodeo <laughs> <laughs> where they attempted to bring together people named Ryan. They fell short. But this uh, Kyle party, Josh, has come a long way. The first time they set this party up, there was 100 people. Then, oh, Christ, there was a year or two. They only, had hmm. they only had 34 Kyles show up. Then 27 Kyles was all they could muster. But I'm guessing social media has made it, so this has become a big deal. I think they're probably going to break the record. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I like this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, it's cool. cool. If there was ever a Dana Fest, it would be a nice ratio for the male Danas, I'm guessing. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no, yeah. dude, you would be sitting real pretty. It'd dude, be, that's a that's genius. There might be some folks that are like, you know what, I need this, and they would legally change their name to Dana <laughs> just because all the ladies that will probably be there. It would be all 
checks. Although, you, you know what, Dana? The, the first Dana I ever met was a guy. Was it? Uh, yeah, a guy I went to high school with. Yeah, there were three other female Danas in my grade growing up in elementary school. So I, was, I found out pretty early that uh, it's... More common as a girl's name than a guy's <laughs> name. Yeah, actually, if it makes you feel any better, Dana, I think you're the only Dana I know. So, that. There you go. I went to school with a dude named Dana, and he beat the living hell out of one of my best friends. <laughs> oh, no. oh, he beat the piss out of one of my best friends. Did your friend have a comment? Yes, he did. Okay. <laughs> yes, I mean, it makes did. it a little better, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, on behalf of Dana's, uh, I guess I apologize, but if he had it coming, he had it coming. It's kind of a funny story. I think I've told you before. I don't know. I don't remember. I'm so narcissistic, I tell all these self-serving stories all day long. <laughs> but this buddy of mine, Christopher, uh, comes from a very, very Greek family. His parents are two of my favorite people ever. Um, his family still means so much to me. We grew up together from day one, and his folks, with their thick Greek accents, uh, I still love to tell stories about them. Um, and Chris, Christopher, as his family called him, was just a great guy. He was the, uh, Josh, he was the lead guitar player in our high school rock band. Oh, shoot. And who you've told me he was very, very good. Wildly talented. Without a question in my mind, if he would have gotten on a bus and went to Los Angeles in 1987, we'd be going to see his friggin' concerts. That's how talented this kid was. Did he have the look? Yeah. Oh, he, he had big uh, hairdo. Yeah, he lucky. had the hairdo and everything. So anyway, uh, maybe you had to be there, but uh, this very Greek Chris friend of mine gets just beaten to a pulp by this kid named Dana in school. And it was right around the holidays. And Chris gets sent home from school because of the fight, and his head is just blown up. I mean, he's just he's just swelled up. His mother, stay-at-home mom, heard about, you know, of course, the, the principal called Chris's mother and said, we're sending Chris home. He got in a fight. When Chris, bad enough already that he's just tuned up, Looks like garbage. His face hurts. His head hurts. He's embarrassed. But he walks into his, his mother's house, his parents' house, on this day. And the first thing he's, his mother says to him in her thick Greek accent, she says, Congratulations, Christopher. You have ruined Christmas. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You don't want that smoke from yeah. your Greek mom? Oh, yeah. no. Not, oh, are you okay, honey? What happened? <laughs> you have ruined Christmas. Was he the type of guy that was that had it coming a lot, or was this kind of an anomaly? This was an anomaly. It was. For whatever reason, he wanted to mess with this Dana dude. Oh, uh, no. Who spent all day long doing pull-ups and bench pressing 425. Why he wanted to mess with this dude, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so everyone uh, have a great weekend. What else did I want to say about, oh, uh, Josh, uh, the Kyle, um, Kyle Nato, what do they call it again, the Kyle Fair? Uh, it's a three-day Kyle Ganza <laughs> down there in Kyle, Texas. They've got concerts, uh, they've got rides and performances, okay? That's fun. One of my neighbors has a Bruce Palooza every summer. Um, he, uh, that can't birthday. be the biggest crowd anymore, Bruce. The, yeah, it's not. It's, I mean, it's he invites people with other names. Oh, okay. yeah. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I could see, see why that was confusing. Uh, I was going in a different direction. Yeah, he has a Bruce Palooza for his birthday party. So we got our first invite last year. You're going to. You went to. We went last a summer. Bruce Palooza. Yeah. Was it everything that you uh, expected it to be? It was. So I. Uh, it was fun. I, I. You know, we didn't know him super well. Um, you know, we're newer in the neighborhood. And so I had called my stepson, he's a bartender, and I'm like, hey, what, what is a good wine? Like, you know, to say thank you and that kind of thing. And he told me, and we went and bought this bottle of wine. It was like a hundred and some dollars. You know, I never spend money on alcohol, but I'm like, you know what, let's, let's make, let's give him something nice. We really appreciated the invite. Nice move on your part. Uh, yeah, I thought, you know, and, and we heard that they appreciate fine wine or whatever. So we handed it to him. He's like, oh, thanks. And he set it on the table with like all the wines for the party. I'm like, ah, we could have brought a $20 bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I was thinking they might save it for a special occasion. It'd be a decent birthday gift, but he said it right there. Yeah, that's right. There was a small party where I thought, well, I'm just going to take this and come back with a different bottle. hundred and some bucks. Oh, gone. that's awesome. Well, you cut loose just once. All you gone. did. All gone, yeah. So, uh, not, and I couldn't even tell you the name of it, but I remember it was, it was fancy. There's a new Jesus name update. James from Two North South at Methodist is henceforth 
known as, oh, you're that Jesus, Jesus. That's his Jesus name. Korean Jesus texts the Luther Bloomington Kia text line simply to say good morning to everyone. Oh, cool. He oh, wants nice. everyone to have a good morning. Yeah. Congrats to Camp Ripley Jesus getting married this weekend. Uh, he says he suspects something's up, though, because he's claiming that he has nothing going for him and she has certainly settled. Mm. That's not true. <laughs> you're a catch and you know it. Monster Truck Jesus wishes his fiance a great bridal shower weekend. Still three whole months to change your mind, he said. Shout out to uh, Up North Metal Mullet Jesus hitting the casino tonight. Happy 15th to Braden from Dad, dual exhaust Jesus. Happy 8th birthday to Autumn from Mom and Dad, you betcha Jesus. Happy belated birthday to X Hotel Jesus. Have a great weekend, everyone, and until Monday, deuces. The 93X and FS Morning Show. 90. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com.